It is uh, September 12th, uh, 2017. Um, I am Hanson Sue, and here with Mark Weber, and we're interviewing Boz Ording. Is that correct? Yep, Boz Ording. Yep. Boz, Boz, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let, let's, can you just start with a little bit of background on yourself, um, where you're from? Sure, yeah. Um, so I'm uh, from the Netherlands, uh, so I was born, and uh, um, I studied uh, interaction design in the Netherlands. It was a, a pretty new course at that at that time. It was in college. Yeah, I was in college. It was, it was part of the the art academy, art school, hmm. um, and they had a special department that did more like technical things. Uh, they also had like uh, music technology and hmm. uh, animation and that kind of stuff. So um, and interaction design was was part of that uh, department as well. So was it a new a new field or a new program? Yeah, it was new. Uh, so when I started, that was just the second year that uh, that I was running, basically. So, oh. um, what year was that? Um, that was in '92. Yeah. Huh. And I was looking for what I wanted to study. I, I knew I wanted to do something creative, and like I looked at graphic design or even industrial design, or and then I heard about this thing, and I was like really excited about it, even though I didn't quite know what it was. But um, I understood it had to do with technology, but also with the creative part, like design, and, and um, so I thought, hey, this this could be could be interesting because I was already interested in computers as well. So, yeah. uh, and I like drawing and that kind of stuff. So it was a, seemed like a perfect combination. So, yeah. well, what was your first exposure to computers? Um, just when I was like like uh, in school, I guess in my first year in high school, uh, we had a Commodore 64, <laughs> 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 and that's how I learned a little bit of programming and basic and that kind of stuff. And yeah. um, which is uh, which is fun. So, hmm. and how about your interest in art or graphics? I am um, well. I guess m my dad is a graphic designer, and he had his own company, and they were working on uh, packaging design, like a uh, branding and logos and all that kind of stuff. So, I guess that throughout, I, g I grew up with that sort of just seeing or being interested in visuals or, or graphics and all that kind of stuff. So, hmm. um, and. Yeah, like I said, combined with also interest for computers, so mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I was like happy to s to see this course called interaction design. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. this this could be uh, something good. So, so it was always yeah. called that. It was it was not called like user interface design or experience design or. No, I think it may have changed in the mean in the meantime now in the past mm -hmm. years. But uh, when I started, it was called interaction design. Huh. So. Yeah. And so, um, wh what was your first job out of out of school? Um, well, I started already working freelance on smaller projects during school time. So, um, like well, one of my professors, he had this own company, and I would start help out like on small projects there and <laughs> on the side. So that was that was good. So yeah. um, this could make a little bit of money, and also you get the experience what it is to work on, a, on an actual real, real yeah. thing. So that was pretty uh, pretty valuable. <laughs> so. Um. So uh, how did you um, how did you end up at end up at Apple? Um, well, so the um, so I was working freelance in the Netherlands and, uh, for another year, I guess after I graduated mm -hmm. my master's, and um, I was always interested in Apple, um, and because I, we'd been uh, one time with with uh, with school, we had a work week in in Silicon Valley, uh, mm -hmm. and. I, I went along with that too, and, and my professor he knew people in this area. And um, after that that week at that company, um, he um, wanted to drive by some of the other places, other companies that where he knew people. And if and he asked if someone wanted to join, I'm like, sure, I'll I'll go come along with you. So so then we went to Apple and like Silicon Graphics and a bunch of other places. And uh, so that was the first time I saw like the Apple campus, and I was all like, oh, "Wow, this is like amazing! <laughs> this is super cool!" And I, I don't know. I think I felt that energy, or I felt something special there. And I'm like, "Oh, this! I don't know. Some sometime in the future, I want to go back there if possible." And uh, anyway, so I was um, uh, working freelance in the Netherlands, and I decided that maybe I can see if I can do a project for Apple or something. And um, so my professor, he knew. The person uh, in the um, HI group back mm. then, uh, Pauline Strijland, and she was heading up the, the group, and she's also Dutch. Uh, and um, uh -huh. Pauline Pauline Strijland. Strijland. Yeah, I can give you the 
the spelling later, but, uh, and um, so, so he, my professor, uh, he made, um, Dick uh, Reiker, he made this contact, or he helped me create a contact at Apple. Um, and anyway, I ended up like buying an airplane ticket and booked a hotel and I just spent two weeks in Silicon Valley and I went by a couple of companies. <laughs> Uh, one was Apple, and one was uh, Meta Creations. I don't know if you huh. still know about that I one. <laughs> I remember something. And Kai Krause, uh, they, they did like a bunch of uh, pretty cool software for like Photoshop extensions, like mm. with cool filter effects and like, and they ha they were known for doing like very, um, very cool looking UI. It was very like new, different kind of stuff that went like mm. a little out, out, out outside the box. <laughs> and uh, um, so, um, so I talked with them as well. And that was super exciting. Uh, they have a cool studio. Well, they don't exist anymore. Uh, but then they had this cool studio in Santa Barbara, like it's basically right by the beach, and like cool group of people there working on like pretty awesome UI stuff. And um, so after I talked with Apple, uh, which went pretty well, but they said that they couldn't hire anyone and. Huh. Because at that point Apple was not doing so well. <laughs> oh, right. This was 1997. 90, this is 90. Um, Six. This is in 97. Then, mm -hmm. actually, no, that was. Uh, that was in 98. <coughs> um, and. Um, 98. That was in 98. And then. Um. Um. Sorry. What was I? Uh, <laughs> Okay, so Apple had this hiring freeze, so they weren't allowed to hire people. So that's what they told me. So mm -hmm. yeah, sorry, uh, but we do have a list of some other companies or people that you maybe can go by as well if you like. And uh, so I went by Adobe and some other companies as well. And uh, um, and then I ended up at Medicarations talking there, and uh, which was super exciting to me because of all the cool UI stuff that they were doing. So. Um, I was all like, oh yeah, this, this is great. And they, they were like, well, we can talk about getting you a job here. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is awesome. Um, so uh, I was excited. But then I got this email from Apple. And uh, if I wanted to come back again, because I was still in the area, to talk to more people from the, the HI team there. Um, so I'm like, I was hesitating because I thought, well, I want to do this medication thing. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, but anyway, I was like in the area, so I'm like, I might as well go back. And so I did, and I spent a day there talking to, having a lot of one-on-ones with, with people from the, the human interface group. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, the manager he, uh, picks me up from the last person that I was talking to, and he says, uh, well, there's one more person <laughs> who wants to see your work, and it's uh, Steve Jobs wants to see your stuff. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow, like, I had like, really not expected that. So, <laughs> um, so I was like, oh, okay. Uh, so I walked with him to the building one at the infinite loop there, and uh, we went to the fourth floor to, uh, to the boardroom, and that's where the first iMac was sitting there in the corner. Mm. And um, I basically have, like, had to show my work. I had my CD-ROM with me, and I had to like, show it on that iMac, which no one had seen for real before that, at that point. I mean, it, it was announced. It was announced. But there was pictures on the internet. It was, it was announced, and, but no one had seen the, the actual thing yet, for real. So, so I was all like, oh, this is super cool. This is special. <laughs> uh, so I had to set up my stuff, and then uh, Steve walks in the room, and then uh, uh, the manager says, like, uh, Cordell uh, Ratzlaff is his name. Uh, he, um, I think he, I'm not sure if he stayed around. He, I think he left uh, anyway. Um, so I started showing my, my, my portfolio, which basically is like a whole series of like little interactive little prototypes and very like uh, dynamic interactive stuff. And uh, so I just went through my list of stuff to show. It's like, uh, um, and I remember Steve being like uh, quite excited about it, and there's certain things he liked and other things he didn't like so much. He'd be like, oh, "I don't understand why I don't get I don't get the idea of this," and I'm like, "Okay, so I'm moving on to my next thing." And <laughs> um, but uh, but it went pretty well, and um, um, yeah, he was obviously very interested. And at some point, he all of a sudden got up and he's like, "Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute!" And uh, so he leaves the room, and but then he comes back with the shell of an iMac, just. Hmm the shell <laughs> and he starts to show me the inside of it like hmm. how all the details and how it's and I don't know anything about industrial design so I was like okay <laughs> <laughs> I don't know but I did understand that he was all about 
the details of things, even the inside of it, right? Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and then, yeah, we talked some more, and I don't remember all the specifics because it's a while ago. Um, and then afterwards, he walked down the hall with the manager, and um, while I was waiting in the hall, in the um, in the hall there, and um, then he comes back to me and he says like, uh, "Boss, uh, I want you to come work for Apple." Uh, and I'm like, "Oh wow, uh, cool!" But and I'm but I'm in my mind, I'm going to medical relations, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, "Well, I have to think about this." <laughs> so that's what I told him. He's like, yeah, "I have to think about it." So. And he was like, oh, really? Uh, I'm like, yeah. And, and he's like, oh, you know what? Um, um, I'm trying to remember when, I think he said that he wanted me to at least not get on the plane just yet before I had like an actual contract in my hand that I could uh. review while on my flight or something back home. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so that happened. Uh, <laughs> so I went back to the Netherlands and then I had like a couple of weeks to think about stuff because I wasn't sure what to do. It was not an easy decision because I, I thought, at that point, Medicarations was doing, uh, at least on, in my field, way more interesting stuff. Hmm. And Apple, at that time, was like, you know, the UI was very good, but it was like still the sort of boring gray kind of standard UI. And um, I mean, it worked well, but it was not super exciting compared yeah. with the Medicarations stuff, which was like more crazy <laughs> out yeah. there. Um, so there was a bunch of emailing back and forth and at some point Steve Jobs even called me at home. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, of course he forgot the time difference with the Netherlands, so he called way too early in the morning. <laughs> and I was barely awake and I had to like deal with Steve on the phone, like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, in the end he um, managed to convince me uh, to, um, to come work for Apple, so. And yeah, yeah. He's a hard man to turn down. <laughs> yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm glad I made that decision to go to go work for Apple. So. Yeah. <laughs> and did Meta so. Creations know that you had the? Yeah, they, I think they knew that I was they knew that I was talking with Apple as well. So, mm. uh, so they were both trying to. They were both trying, yeah. yeah. So, and in the end, like Meta Creations also congratulated me. They said, "Oh, great! Did you get the Apple thing? That's it's, it's a good, it's a cool, it's a cool thing. It's good." So, um, so that made me feel also good about the decision. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. And then, yeah, then this whole, the whole process started, like, I moved to the U.S., and, uh, which is quite exciting. So, uh, <laughs> and, yeah, it was, it was a pretty amazing experience. <laughs> so. well, what did you work on first when you got to Apple? Um, <coughs> so, yeah, when I joined the, the uh, HI group, I started to work on um, so ideas for Mac OS X, mm -hmm. like, uh, specifically... I guess the the dock uh, mm -hmm. at the bottom of the screen, the, um, because Steve had seen one of the demos that I made where that had like the magnification effect that's in oh, the dock the currently. Oh, the effect. No, it's uh, the magnification of the icons. In oh, the, dock. the icons. Okay. Yeah, and uh, and the demo I had made was not for icons, but it was just for little pictures, like photo images, basically in a, in a small thin strip. Mm -hmm. And if you roll over, it would just sort of zoom out and create sort of a fisheye effect. Oh, right. Uh, so that whole thing where you can ripple across. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I started to work on, on that basically, but then for the Mac. And the one thing that I didn't realize at the time when I showed that demo to Steve is that at Next they had the dock, uh, but that was a fixed icon size. Mm -hmm. And you only had like, I don't know, 13 slots or something. And if it was full, it was full. That was it. Mm -hmm. You couldn't add any more. So this, I think that Steve thought that this would be a good solution to like to the problem basically to fit like almost an infinite amount of apps or icons in there and you're still able to really like see them at full size and, and you can just roll over and it's and, and it's a, a fun effect as well so mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah so when Apple saw your photo demo they thought aha that could be for the dock yeah I think that's probably what yeah. Steve thought <laughs> if I'm not looking back at it I'm like oh okay yeah. I get it because I was kind of naive at that point I guess when I showed it first and I think that Steve thought oh this could be a a solution to our problem that uh. they've been trying to solve for a long time. So, huh. um, anyway, so yeah, I started to work on the dock and uh, other things for Mac OS X, like some visual design. Uh, um, I worked a whole bunch on the um, yeah, what later is called the Aqua user interface, yeah. the, the, the glossy buttons, mm -hmm. the blue uh, <laughs> user interface elements, and um, and I worked on yeah the 
other effects like the genie effect that everyone probably knows so right. where windows gets sucked into the dock and all that <laughs> Uh, yeah, so Steve really liked to demo that one. <laughs> yeah, it was it was fun to work on too, and it's definitely fun to, to demo. So it's <laughs> and we added stuff in like the slow motion effect that mm -hmm. uh, people have seen. And the the funny thing is, it's like it was not meant for for demo for demonstration purposes, but it was more for while we're working on it that we could see if it was doing exactly the right shape. Mm -hmm. That there was not like weird jumps in it, or that we didn't calculate it li right how far along it was. And so it was basically meant just for during development time uh, but then we end up leaving in the <laughs> yeah in the <laughs> final version that you can also slow it down yeah. still so <laughs> how did how did you come up with that the genie effect um the genie effect started when we were thinking about uh so there's these dialogue panels that you can get when you print a document right it mm -hmm. comes down from the the title bar because that was a new thing back then oh the sheets the sheets yeah, yeah. so that's where it started because that concept was like pretty new when there was already they already thought of this before I started there, mm -hmm. uh, that it would be attached to the window that it's that it applies to, right? So, but uh, we wanted to animate that instead of just like appearing. Mm. We wanted to have an animation, but the problem was like if the window is smaller than the sheet that comes out of it, then how is that going to work? <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking about a whole bunch of, and uh, there's some other people on the team as well that uh, we we're trying to think about like how how can we animate this in a kind of an interesting way. It makes sense, and um, so that's how uh, how the genie sort of started, more of an upside down kind of way, mm. where it would just come out this way, and then expand. And later on, we applied it like this way out of from the bottom. So, <laughs> um, so that's kind of how that mm. came about. So, yeah. The um, the next OS, I mean, were they? I mean, obviously they wanted a new look, mm. but were they asking you to look closely at it, and um, we're not. Um, or just sort of clean sheet of paper. Yeah, I just, I mean, I've seen it. I guess I saw it, and but I, had, I didn't really study it that closely okay. from what I remember. So it's more like just come up with new ideas for mm -hmm. uh, this new thing. So. Where did mm. the, I mean, the the design of Aqua being, you know, these candy colored lickable buttons and things, and the, d d where did that design come from? Was it motivated by the 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 iMac, the colors of the iMac, or yeah, from what I understand, because uh, other people from the team then were also working on on this yeah, ideas for the styling and the visuals, and um, they, uh, I guess, they were really basing it off like or inspiring by the the iMac itself that mm. had the sort of more sh uh, colorful, shiny plastics that uh, um, created a certain kind of like quality, and uh, I think that the direction was to kind of try and make design the OS so that it would go with the hardware as well. So mm -hmm. even the sort of pinstripe pattern that was in the background, mm -hmm. that was from the iMac as well and mm -hmm. those kind of things. So um, yeah, it was definitely, uh, we even tried to do like all the five colors of the iMac, like red and <laughs> green and like all that stuff, uh, <laughs> orange and it was pretty cool. So we explored all these, the whole the whole set. and uh, But in the end, it, I guess, uh, I guess it's like more complicated to build it that way, and also th the problem is like if, if if you have a red iMac and if all your buttons are red, red is also has a certain association like it could be a uh, negative thing or for it can be for a delete or cancel or uh, so that didn't work so well. Uh, yeah. So we just ended up with just the blue, which is really nice, and then later we added like the graphite look that is a little bit more subdued and uh, mm -hmm. professional. So yeah, hmm. but w what about the um the th the stoplight buttons at the top of the window. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um. yeah uh, <coughs> that one was a bit of a f sort of a I guess a f struggle to kind of to do that because the, for the yeah for so long the Mac always had Mac OS had the zoom box on the right mm -hmm. and the close box on the left and like but Steve really wanted to have it all just on one side and mm -hmm. and and he wanted to I guess I'm not sure how it came to be but. It, he wanted this, this, this stoplight thing, the red, orange, green, and oh, he specifically said that he wanted red, orange, uh, yeah, red, like yellow, he, he said, yeah, like a stoplight. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we're, on the one hand, I think like, but it's not really a stoplight; they don't work like that. But, <laughs> but that's something. It's very, everyone knows those colors, right? So, it's mm. in that sense, it's it's probably. I mean, it's a strong uh, concept, I guess, from that. <laughs> but the meaning of it doesn't, in my mind, doesn't quite connect. But. <laughs> um, yeah, so it became sort of the I iconic 
color uh, buttons for for Mac OS 10. Huh. So. Mm-hmm. Can you talk a little bit who you were working for? Who are the main main people that you were working with as well? Uh, in the team, yeah. Well, there was like, um, gosh, I may be forgetting a bunch of names here, but there was like Tim Lasko, for example. I'm not sure if you've talked with him. Mm-hmm. Um, because he was doing a lot of the visual design uh, in the earlier phase as well, and huh. um, and he worked a lot on iTunes and that mm. kind of stuff as well. Um, uh, it was like when I started, the group was a little bigger, and at some point, like there was some changes and people left, and then um, so and then later on, new people got hired again. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, the, the 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 group has been has been changing over the past couple of years. So. Huh. Um, but um, yeah, and it was a mix of people that are doing more the real interaction design, which is not necessarily always like the visual design, right? Mm-hmm. So, and some people have a combination, and um, and I personally like to do, I guess, more the dynamic stuff and the uh, interactive, mm-hmm. like lively, uh, dynamic animations. Uh, mm-hmm. That's sort of my bias usually. Although I do like to do some just like more static visual design as well, but uh, mm-hmm. but I like the the stuff that moves. <laughs> <laughs> so. Same like bouncing icons in the dock and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and who was your manager though? I uh, started out being Cordell Ratzlaff, and then later uh, we had uh, Don Lindsay. Oh, Don Lindsay, yeah. Kevin Teen for a little while, and then Greg Christie. So. Mm. And was uh, Imran already in the group when you joined? Uh, no, he was in the. Quick time group at that hmm. time, so I met him later, like outside, and then we ended up talking, and then I saw the stuff he was working on for for Quick Time VR and that kind of stuff, and we yeah. talked some more, and he's like, hey, I'm like joined the HI team, and so he ended up talking with the manager at the time, and then uh, yeah, he got to join the, the team as well, so yeah. which is cool. So <laughs> we, and from then on, we ended up like working closely together like a lot, so. Yeah. I think Greg Christie mentioned that um, at the time there were <coughs> there were various there were HI people scattered around the company, but then later um, there was reorganization and, and everybody got centralized into one group, and that's how Greg Christie ended up joining the group. Right. Yeah. So I am. Um I'm trying to remember because when I started, that was already more centralized, and maybe it's like a few that were still not part of the the main group. But because mm. uh, I think in the earlier days, they teamed up people m- closer to the engineering groups as well, mm-hmm. um, which is also a good idea. But then later, it just got like sort of consolidated <laughs> into mm-hmm. one one big group. So mm. um, so yeah, that's and Greg Christie was part of that too. too mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So when when was your first uh, when did you first meet Greg? Um, well, like well, <laughs> that first day then I or that second day that I interviewed at Apple. Oh, that's okay. when I talked with him at the end of the day. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so he was part of the gr- the team, the group that interviewed you. Yeah. So I asked him to talk to me too. So okay. Yeah. But because I, I think at that point he wasn't like officially in that team yet. I think yeah. I don't even know, but. Uh, but I did talk with them, so. Huh. Yeah. So. Hmm. so. So then you said um, you you met Imran um, in the parking lot um, uh, at Apple. So yeah. Could you tell us that story? Oh, uh, we were just like smoking cigarettes or something. <laughs> okay. Like so, <laughs> so you were both <laughs> you on just run into breaks. people, you're talking, and like, and you're like, oh, hey, what are you doing? Like, First you chat about all this stuff, and then later on you're like, what do you actually work on? And then <laughs> so that's sort of what happened. And then we just end up talking more, and uh, yeah. And then he became, he, huh, he interesting. got, uh, became part of the group as well, so. Huh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <The> designer. <laughs> cool. Um, so did you, did you ever feel like th- um, was, there's a, was there any criticism over the Aqua interface as being too much about eye candy? And <laughs> oh. oh yeah, you get all kinds of feedback. Uh, <laughs> and I think, uh, yeah, of course, especially from what the Mac used to be, which is much more subdued, flat mm-hmm. gray, and like, 
it was a quite a quite a change and but i think at that time apple wanted to be have a big change this is like a new the new apple i guess uh, that's, that's what steve called it and uh he wanted it to be different and fresh and new and maybe some stuff went maybe a little too far but then later <laughs> later on it got more and more especially if you compare it with the current mac os okay. 10 it's uh it's it's way more subdued again so mm-hmm. i think it just went through that phase and it, it's the same for the for the hardware too i guess right so mm-hmm. the this bright color IMAX and stuff, that's, it's not there anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, although I guess iPhones, you can have cool like color cases and, and cool color uh, Apple watches and all that. So, <laughs> uh, But for a long time, it was the bias was towards more aluminum and white and just sort of, or black. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so I guess the OS went through a s- similar phase almost. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and the, the I and iMac and later on has been described as standing for internet as well as I, like personal. I mean, did that, was that part of the, a big part of sort of the design philosophy, the internet or? Uh, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember like thinking about that all too much like that. So. Okay. Um, um, in later versions of OS X, you started to introduce things like brushed metal and other sort of real-world textures. What was the sort of the the motivation behind behind that kind of a thing? Um, actually, that was a good one to, uh, for Imran to, <laughs> to oh, answer okay. that yeah. kind of stuff and like, uh, or I don't know. I guess also Steve is into materials, mm. especially iTunes is always every year changed the texture was slightly different and better and mm-hmm. like actually Tim Wasco worked on that too and he probably tell you a little bit about that too mm. <laughs> uh, Steve is into materials and the quality of stuff and like so uh, I guess he was yeah pushing for that so mm. um, and it started with iTunes but then later made his way into other apps as well right. and then later on especially uh, the dashboard widgets had like their own sort of styling and yeah. textures and materials and like it was yeah, it was pretty cool. It was more expressive, and some people liked it, some people didn't. But I think it was kind of kind of nice. It had its own sort of p- pretty strong like identity, and uh, there's something fun about it. And it had s- definitely something about like a quality that, that it's not just a simple gray computer rectangle. It's mm-hmm. like something a little bit more to it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um. yeah. how did the design language of OS X evolve over the years? I mean, you mentioned it, it got more subdued. Um, yeah, I guess it got more refined, like the buttons got like a little crisper, everything got a little f- more flatter, I guess, and still, but still trying to keep that like, sort of glossy quality to it. Um, yeah, so, and played with the shadows to make that little, or, or some of the shadows got bigger and more diffuse, others more sharp, and um, I guess at some point we even got rid of the round corners on the menu mm. bar, that kind of stuff, and uh, just to kind of try and clean it up and... Uh, and yeah, the different elements of the OS went through different stages, I guess, like the dock first was pretty flat, later it was more in the perspective, and then mm-hmm. it had like a glassy sort of surface, uh, and then, um, but now it's back to being more straight up, and then that's yeah. sort of this frosted glass kind of background, and um, so yeah, it's just like, like fashion almost, I guess. <laughs> 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 um, so, I mean, yeah. it was... <laughs> I mean, did you guys just changing th- things up just for the sake of changing th- things, changing them up? Like, I mean, you mentioned fashion, right? Was it that well, was the reason, or? I think I wasn't just for change. Well, no, I wasn't just for because we were trying to make it better or to give it a certain kind of new, cool look or something, mm-hmm. and and or to match the hardware or just to, in general, just to kind of give it a certain feel and to make it feel more. I guess yeah, give it more uh, quality, but also refinement. So. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, um, he wasn't there before that. Um, could you talk about expose? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, how did that come about? Um, so, um, I think this was like uh, the same year that movie came out, the uh, Minority Report. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and it wasn't a conscious thing, like, oh, I'm gonna make the same thing or whatever, but like. I mean, it's not even the same. It's just like it was definitely inspired by it, because I thought there was something super cool in that movie where he's like, 
with his weird gestures. He's like navigating this sort of these memories or, or the future, basically, right? This uh -huh. sort of video stuff. And he was digging through stuff and trying to find find things. And one day I'm just staring at my screen. I have a bunch of windows and I they're overlapping each other. And, and I'm thinking like, I was just sort of imagining like, I wish I could just sort of like go behind that window so I can see, I can just see them all or part of it, whatever. I wasn't even quite sure what, but, and then I'm like, well, let's, let's just start really simple. What if I just had two windows? So one is above the other one. Wh what would you do to s see them both? I'm like, well, I can just like separate them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be easy to do. And then if the windows are too big, if it won't fit in the screen, I could just like scale them down. So it's still, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, oh, well, if it's three windows, then well, it gets a little more complicated because how are they going to move, right? So, mm. so I thought about it for a while, and I came up with this sort of algorithm or way to do that, where you can just sort of like it's a whole iterative uh, process where it just like basically gradually shuffles the, all the windows apart a little bit <laughs> until it reaches like um, un until none of them are overlapping anymore, and then you scale the whole thing down to fit in the screen. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but that happens behind the scene because you basically animate straight straight to where they need to be so um, so that's basically what like how that came about I guess <laughs> um, because I guess everyone had the same issue where you have a whole bunch of windows and you know it's somewhere in the pile but you just can't you can't get to it and <laughs> you can't see it right so um, so that was really fun fun to work on and uh, and then I worked together with like uh, John Louch uh, mm. from engineering and he's like, he's super good. And he worked on the dock mm. to get that all to animate at like high frame rates and all the, uh, to get it really like uh, working really well. And, and I knew that he could access, because of the genie effect mm -hmm. that was owned sort of by the dock, the process that, uh, that runs the dock and, and that has to basically grab a window and, and morph it, right? Mm. Or manipulate it. So I knew that like John Louds knew how to access the windows on the screen. Uh, so I'd be like, hey, if you can grab these windows, you can grab any window, right? Yeah, yeah. So okay, well let's run this algorithm on 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 these rectangles basically, and see what happens. So we started to do that, and okay, of course, like his his code went like ten times faster than my my code. So it, like was super cool and worked super fast, and uh, so it was super exciting. So uh, so because of John, we could like get all this stuff to work in the in the real system too, mm -hmm. and. Uh, we could just play with it and like really use it for real, uh, um, and then yeah, we could demo it to uh, Steve Jobs and a bunch of other people, and they get all excited. And then, of course, you got all the other ideas. Oh yeah, it needs to be just the app windows, or oh, it needs to be all the windows, or mm -hmm. and, and then yeah, we, we added this thing where you can hide all of them, so you push them all off screen, mm -hmm. right? So to show the desktop, and so yeah, so you got a bunch of stuff that got added to it, features and. Uh, I think it became pretty useful, so. and it's still I see people use it. Uh, um, and meanwhile, it's also been like further developed. There's more other, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, more features, and it has changed a little bit. But it's, uh, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how did you wait? So, how did you develop that the prototype or the mock-up? Oh, so uh, I use this program called Director. Mm -hmm. uh, it used to be Macromedia right. and Adobe, and uh, so that's basically what I used to make uh, basically most of my all my demos and prototypes. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that I can animate things, or I can just write little programs that can do those algorithms. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was my main tool. <laughs> so then you collaborated heavily with with John Lauch to implement the the one that actually goes into the OS. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah same way we worked very closely with the doc for for a long time. Right to get all the animations, to get all the behaviors in, and, and of course John knows a lot more about actual system level stuff to make it really work for the real thing, which is uh, apparently also not so easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, same thing for Expose, we worked really closely as well to kind of get all the details and all the, how you trigger it, and mm -hmm. uh, we tried to come up with ways, like for a while we had this, uh, this is silly, this like round blue button that we had sitting on the screen that you could drag around anywhere if you click it, it would just do expose. If you click it again, it goes back. Mm -hmm. But then this this button was kind of in the way. It was kind of useful, but also in the way. So you ended up putting it all the way in the corner. And then we were like, well, if we could put it in the corner, we may as well just use the hot corners like you use for your mm -hmm. screensaver as well, right? So <laughs> so that's what ended up being one of those features. You yeah. just put your mouse in the corner and all your windows go. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's kind of fun to explore all these uh, ideas, uh, especially if you can 
build them into the real system right away mm -hmm. and can and really use it. So that's yeah, fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so. And how did that? So you would do in Macromedia, then at some point you sort of hand that over, they implement it in the real thing, and then you're just giving feedback. You can no longer directly control it. You're giving what verbal feedback or sitting and both um, going over it or Yeah, and sometimes like I would I could I can read some C code so I can see uh, I can still help thinking about like what the function should do or how it should work. Um, but yeah, then it's implemented in the real system, and then it's yeah, I've, it's not just like a, f a fake demo anymore. It's the real thing. So, um, and then of course there's all the help from the other teams, like the, gra the core graphics, and mm -hmm. they're helping with performance, the graphics performance, and that it's like super smooth, and that there's no hiccups and stutters in there, and uh, they could, that it runs at full frame rate as much as possible, and um, yeah, just get that really like super smooth, fast exp um, experience, right? So, because mm -hmm. that. It's actually the, the real important thing uh, I find with in general, just to make it feel really good. But also, if you're if you're busy and you're trying to get like your work done, done it like it should be, uh, um, it should be really quick and shouldn't be too much latency. And uh, so the animation, we spend a bunch of time on just working on the timing that it's not too fast and not too slow. And uh, yeah. so. Uh, and testing it on users at all, or mostly internal? Well, we would, uh, it was internal. So we just use it ourselves and uh, yeah, that's how we work for the most part, so. Oh, you yeah. were, you, were you not using the user testing lab at no, that point? No, we okay. weren't. Uh, okay. I know in the back in the day they used to do that, but right. but we for those things we didn't, we didn't really do that, so. Uh -huh. but <laughs> what, um, was this before the core animation framework was available? Yeah, that didn't exist at that point. Right. So, so yeah. like the all the animations had to be just done by hand. Yeah, we had like basically had to program all the the animations. Right. So directly in OpenGL or whatever. Um, yeah, I guess it was probably using OpenGL. I'm not sure. There was the, the Windows Server was basically dealing with that part. So mm -hmm. uh, the core graphics side, Windows Server. I forgot right. what it's called, but. Yeah. <laughs> uh, could you talk a little bit about dashboard? Um, yeah, that's well. It's mainly uh, Imran worked on that like oh, a okay. ton, so he would be the the one to ask about those things. Oh, right, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to remember if there's anything specific there that I can can add, but I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Um, I helped out with like a couple little things in there, but uh, but the majority was like. It's Imran, so. Okay. <laughs> um, before we move on to the phone, um, were there any other important designs in OS X or <coughs> any like applications um, that you would like to mention or talk about? Um, let's see. Well, this is lots of little, smaller parts that are, I don't know, that I interesting in that we weren't really done at that time and that I think made a difference in somehow and like like for example the, s the progress bars like mm -hmm. that had the animated pattern in there mm -hmm. and that's something that kind of came from before then in Mac OS 9 or 8 and before if there was a, a problem with your Mac if that progress bar didn't move that meant probably that you had to like like reset reboot it <laughs> <laughs> you're like this is not good mm -hmm. um, so and I remember that feeling where you're like, this progress bar is not moving. I think, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. I think this machine is stuck. So so when we were like doing sort of the aqua version of, sure. of this control, I thought like, oh, uh, it would be kind of fun if there's something something animated in there. And uh, actually Tim Wasco also worked on this stuff as well. And I'm, I don't quite remember how some of these ideas came to be. But uh, anyway, um, we had animations and stuff. So I think that's an, an interesting thing where even if it sits at the same sort mm. of percentage on the progress bar, you still see there's animations. You see, oh, the computer's still fine. It's, it just takes a while, and right. it's, but it's fine. It's the thing is not like frozen, right? So, yeah. Um, so those kind of things that add little, it's uh, it adds something dynamic that's sort of more fun to look at, but it's also s super functional. <laughs> um, so that's yeah, often the the things that we're going for. So it's not just uh, 
to make it look fun or something. <laughs> it's like there's an actual reason why it's there. Right, especially um, since in OS X, the you have multitasking, so it's not. It, it even if that one app is stuck, the whole system isn't stuck, so you don't have to reboot right. the machine. Yes. So yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and because of that, we could do things in a, in a different way. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, just trying to think of other examples. <laughs> Uh, hmm. yeah. Any apps, major apps that you worked on, um, like Sherlock or mm, yeah, I didn't Chat really, or Safari. I didn't really work on apps that much, but uh, no. Well, I guess no. I worked on the system preferences, like how if you click on something, uh, the the window sort of morphs to the mm. panels and like sort of expands and like, crossfades the content. And mm. so I worked more on those kind of things, the transitions and mm. like the just the, f the mechanics almost of the of the UI. And, and I I really I haven't really done like like a whole app or something like that. So. Mm. Um. Hmm. um, so it's moving on. So um, Brian Merchant is recent book talked about the formation <coughs> of this group to explore new rich interactions. Um, so that included um, you, Imran, Greg, uh, Brian Huppy, Duncan Kerr, Mike Colbert, Steve Hotelling, Josh Stricken. So um, who else was part of the group? How did the group form? Um, and you know, what were you, what you were, what were you guys exploring at first? Um, yeah, I think that was about Right, that that's everybody. Yeah, sure. yeah, I think <laughs> so. Yeah, unless I forgot some, <laughs> but I think that was it. Was very small. Yeah. And um, yeah, we just started. How, how did you all get together? I mean, because not everybody was part of HI, right? So there was. Yeah, yeah. There's people from different teams, and I think I don't even remember who initiated, but I definitely know that like Duncan Kerr, he was like uh, helping to sort of like support the, uh, give it some structure, basically the, the ideas, and he would just sort of help. Uh, kind of push it a certain direction, I guess, <laughs> uh, which is great. So uh, yeah, for the whole creative process and uh, trying to come up with different ideas for what we could do. And, it, and yeah, we ended up talking about the multi-touch stuff because, and I don't even know, <laughs> I don't remember anymore how, how it started really, but huh. uh, but yeah, I definitely remember remember having a bunch of those meetings where we were brainstorming about what, what we could do with multi-touch. So huh. Um, and meanwhile, there were like, developing hardware that we could use to actually build some some sort of prototype, something that we could interact with. So, mm -hmm. um, so was, yeah. well, so were you guys exploring multi-touch from the very beginning, or or was that something that you guys had already formed and then you discovered multi-touch? Um, well, for this particular thing, I I, I think I was. Pretty much right away about multi touch, so. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I think. Huh. Uh, so it's almost so you guys essentially convened to to, to explore multi touch. Yeah. Huh. From what I recall. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And and so what did, uh, so th and this was not like a formal group, right? This was just like this was not a formal division in the company. It was just no. Sort of it's just like a bunch of people like from an interest group. Yeah. Kind of a mm -hmm. thing. Yep. And did you guys give yourselves a name or <laughs> or anything? Or did you, no? I don't remember that we had a name. That was just <laughs> we just had this meeting about um, I guess multi touch or whatever we call it. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. And how often did you meet then? Uh. I guess I don't know once a week or two weeks. I, I don't remember. It's, uh, huh. And depending on what was going on, more often. But it's uh, yeah. But the cool thing also is the ideas were going, the brainstorming, and then and they were bringing up the hardware platform. I guess with uh, the multi-touch, uh, right? The, 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 the touch pads from Fingerworks and combined with like other software and <laughs> hardware stuff. Uh, um, and then we could start building an actual. Yeah, something you can interact with. Like mm -hmm. I don't know, you probably heard the story with the projector that mm -hmm. we mounted <laughs> on a on a thing to uh, project onto a, the the tablet with a piece of paper and connected to the Mac. And I was using a director demo to um, to run the thing, mm -hmm. and we could move stuff around on it on the screen. <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, that was sort of the, er the very early beginnings of that. So right. it's pretty exciting because it was the first time you could move stuff with your finger in such a easy, lightweight way. It was not, you didn't have to press hard or anything. It was just like magical sort of, you're touching the light. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of work, so it was, uh, yeah, it was just fun. Where you go, like, ooh, this, you can do all kinds of stuff with this, <laughs> and it felt very direct. And even though it was still sort of uh, not not the best prototype in the sense that you would get, I mean, you would get like a shadow from your hand because of the projector, and so mm -hmm. it wasn't ideal, but it was enough to kind of get the point across that you could feel like, oh yeah, this is this is something interesting. So, mm. and was it mm -hmm. the main? This was the main thing you guys were doing, or was it a side project? Oh, that was side, because we were still doing, like, right. uh, Mac OS X. Uh, so it was really just, yeah. Yeah, it was a side, side, side project, yeah. See where mm -hmm. it huh. Yeah. And um, this, is, this was started before um, you acquired Fingerworks, so you were sort of buying their, their devices and playing around with them, or...? I don't. I don't know what uh, what the timeline is there. Cause I, all I know is at some point we had this thing, and I, I don't. Mm. I didn't even know the. I heard about the Fingerworks name, I guess, but I, I didn't. I wasn't aware of mm. what the whole situation was with that technology and, and Apple and. I don't okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> so then the next thing you knew <laughs> that somebody had built this projector table thing, or uh, or we were involved in that. Yeah, well, I, I didn't help building it, but like Brian Huppy and Greg Christie, and mm -hmm. like they and uh, they ended up like putting together this this rig or whatever you call it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, s I saw this happening, and I was like, I had to use that stuff to kind of get the demos going. So, huh. um, isn't that the one Greg said was in some top secret room, particularly? Yeah, yeah. Th that was actually the, the old usability lab. That unfortunately it wasn't used very much <laughs> at that point anymore, but. Um, but yeah, there was like there was no windows and stuff, and there was just a, a key for that for that room. So and that's where we had that set up. So mm -hmm. and yeah, no, no one could get in there unless you had the key, of course. But <laughs> uh, so this was a good good room for uh, doing that secret project. So mm -hmm. yeah. what was the uh, you know, you mentioned um, you know being able to I mean this is the first time you could do direct manipulation, right? So yeah. What was the, what what was the I mean what was the attraction of that whole f of that what w and uh, what did it feel like when you first got it to work? Um. Well, I guess th it was just a magical. It felt magic that you see this light projection of like it was something very simple, just like a, a picture of like I don't even know what it was, but and you can you can touch it and you can just drag it around and. It, 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 that felt very magical, and then of course we added like behaviors to it. So if you you could flick it, then it would just like go, or it had sort of a, an elastic kind of feel to it. So it would bounce against the edges of the screen, and <laughs> sort of like a jelly kind of thing. And it's just like fun to play with, and it, it's it, you feel very connected with it, even though it's just light. Uh, and yeah, that was the magic. <laughs> and so did pinching and zooming come in immediately, or did that follow later? I think it came pretty early on because when we started about what how you can what you can do with multi-touch like mm -hmm. pinch zoom like in a map especially or zooming into a picture uh i came up um, pretty quickly i i think so um and same yeah we built like a demo too where you can zoom into a map and, and rotate and all that stuff mm. and it also became super easy like stuff that usually you would have to select five different tools in a software uh, program to like zoom and rotate and like all that stuff and now you could just do it with your fingers just like that. It was <laughs> like no effort. <laughs> so it was yeah, pretty cool. What other mm. sorts of interactions or gestures did you come up with during that time? Um, well, um, I'm trying to remember. I mean, we tried to just also, we had these demos that were just sort of fun with to play to play with, but they weren't super functional. Hmm. So we tried to think of some other stuff that was more usable. Well, I guess the map zooming was usable, but but uh, how to, to select from a list or how to scroll through like a web page and that kind of stuff. So, yeah. um, so we worked on, on more of those demos. So huh. I built one where it, it was like a, like, a web, like a web browser. So I basically took a, a large image, an actual snapshot of a website basically, <laughs> and I just moved that image around on the screen, but with momentum. So you could just like fling it and it would just go. Huh. And especially on that, yeah, I guess it was on that piece of paper with the projection, it, it just felt very, yeah, fluid. 
and later on we got an actual screen uh. and like a real touch screen and then it f felt even more um, magical I guess <laughs> because yeah. you wouldn't get the shadows and stuff like that right so oh um, wait so when did the wait when did the touch screen come in what how, how long um, was it you got that? yeah I'm trying to remember when that happened that was a, a that, yeah that was later of course uh, and I'm not sure that must have been uh, gosh I don't know how, how many, probably a couple months in between or so, before they were able to build an actual screen that had multi-touch uh, huh. integrated. So, and I mean the scrolling, of course, one finger works. Mm -hmm. The true multi-touch, I mean, pinching and zooming, is it's necessary for. But I mean, where did it, it just seems some of the idea is more about a new way to use a single touch. Some is genuinely using multi-touch. Right, yeah, so most of the, the demos were actual single touch. <laughs> but, uh, and some of them had multi-touch right, with the zooming. And um, we tried, I'm trying to remember uh, if we were, we were trying to do other stuff with like m with multiple fingers if you tap or drag. But I don't, I rem I don't remember the specifics of it right now. But um, but yeah, but a lot of stuff ended up being single finger, um, which is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember so. any any major kind of gestures you were thinking of that didn't make it into the that were too complicated or too? I mean, what were some of the things you explored with multi touch that got dropped later? Um, hmm. I can't remember an example right now. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> did you did you um, did you adapt the gesture language that Fingerworks had already been using, or did you come up with completely new things? So I, d I personally didn't know much about Fingerworks at all. So mm. I later on, of course, I heard also from Wayne Westerman, and right. I, uh, but um, yeah, I, I guess I wasn't I wasn't aware of what they were using really. So. Mm -hmm. Huh. And what did you envision this all being used for initially? Um, well, at that point, we were the assignment basically was to work on this sort of iPad kind of size screen, and we didn't call it the iPad then; it was like just the touch screen. <laughs> and uh, basically, Steve wanted us to. I guess that's I heard this from I guess Greg Christie. Steve had said like, "I want a sheet of glass that I can read my email on." That sort of that was sort of the big assignment. Mm -hmm. So there was this slab of glass and you email, but how do you, you read it? How do you type on this thing? Or how, how is that gonna work? So we, we started looking into that too. How, we, how do you have an on-screen keyboard? And um, and then later, like, how, is this gonna be part of Mac OS X somehow? Or mm -hmm. what, because there was no iOS, so we, all we knew was Mac OS X, right? So, so we were trying to make it work with Mac OS X. But then there's a pointer and there's the tiny close boxes and mm -hmm. all this other stuff and like it was pr not easy to make that work. Hmm. Where I feel like we didn't succeed and therefore it, it also did not become that we just didn't know what to do mm -hmm. with it. Combined that there was other I guess technical <laughs> things that were hard like the thermals and battery life and all mm -hmm. that and the, or just the cost of the whole thing. <laughs> so for a while it was sort of undefined what, what this was going to be. Uh, even though they tried, everyone tried really hard, but it was it wasn't a, an actual product. So, mm. um, was there ever any thought of a of a Mac, a laptop with a touchscreen in addition, or that was ruled out pretty early on? You, yeah, it was all about the sort of more tablet, like a tablet okay. kind of thing, from mm. what I from what I know. So, um, yeah, and then. Yeah, we did a whole bunch of explorations with like on-screen keyboard stuff and touch typing. <laughs> mm. It's tricky, but uh, did um, you look at all to uh, stylus-based interfaces from the, the Simon or the Palm or? No, I mean I didn't. But uh, also, we were told that by Stevex that that he didn't want to work with the stylus. Right. <laughs> no, but I'm saying that the other touch interfaces that happen to use a stylus. Were you uh, studying those or kind of more blank sheet of paper? I guess I guess at some point I saw the Newton, but I haven't really like 
play with it a lot, just a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. So the, the, and the, there was other than that, there was not a whole lot of other stuff out there that I can remember and that you could even play with, really. <laughs> that <laughs> that was of any interest for to me. So, uh, yeah. So we just it was kind of nice to in a way I find because it was more of an open, an open f new open field where you can just you have to come up with the new ideas for how stuff is going to work now. <laughs> so I thought that was super exciting. It's also a little hard because there's, there's really nothing there yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but it also I think that's kind of an exciting thing when that happens, when there's a new sort of technology or a new sort of thing that you have to figure out, like, what are the new rules or what is the new way to do stuff? So, hmm. so you have to develop sort of a, a new kind of language of how to, how to operate it and how to use it. So. Hmm. So this was always more of like, um, just like an exploratory project. It was never, it was never really gotten to the stage of actually being a product. Um, well, yeah, they tried to push it towards becoming a product, but that, yeah, it didn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. so, and I don't know the exact reasons why, but I mean, I, s I just mentioned a couple of them, but I don't know who decided that at some point, like, you know what, this, let's not do this right now. Right. <laughs> Even though there was something super cool about this multi-touch, so. yeah. and therefore I think at some point, I remember getting the. F I was sitting in that lab, uh, working on stuff, and I remember getting a phone call from Steve, and he's. Steve says like, "Oh, we're gonna do this phone. We're gonna <laughs> do a phone." And I'm like, "Wow, oh, because oh. there was already some rumors that Apple would do a phone, and mm -hmm. th but there's always rumors, I guess. But, um, but then Steve said this thing. Uh, I'm like, and he's like, "Yeah, and it's." It's not gonna have any buttons. It's just a screen. It's just with touch. There's no keyboard, like a keypad, right? And uh, so I'm like, oh, and uh, so yeah, he basically asked like if we could work on making or exploring demos or ways to like, how, how do you scroll through your list of contacts and how can you call someone and that mm. kind of stuff. So, so we just use like uh, because we had that larger size um, tablet basically, mm -hmm. uh, that with a cable connected to the computer. But um, so we just used the corner, just masked it off basically. Mm -hmm. and we just used the corner of it that was the size of an iPhone, so you could just sort of hold on to the corner to pretend like you were holding a phone, sort of. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, that's how we started with some of these huh. very basic demos. Like, hey, yeah, just you know, list the names and you scroll, and then you pick one, and it slides over, and you could just pretend like you call someone. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, before we get too far into the phone, uh, there's a couple mm. more questions I wanted to finish up with. Um, so the, let's see, the, um, <coughs> can you talk about your primary design influences? Like, what were you, what was, what were you, what, what was, what, what was influencing you in the, in the kinds of interactions that you would, you would design or the kinds of, interfaces you're designing? Hmm. Um, it's a good question, but I'm not sure actually. I guess, uh, um, well, I guess uh, uh, still from like the school time and like other people also, I guess we're all sort of inspiring each other with making sort of dynamic demos. And of course not everyone was doing that, but like a bunch of people were into that. And that was sort of, uh, I don't know. I feel like that was sort of the. It's you always want to make something that's kind of fun or kind of alive somehow, and that you can share with other people that they also want to play with it or try it out and and get it. Yeah. So I think that's how it started, basically the, the way I create certain things, and hmm. and I I always just sort of kept doing that, I guess. So. Hmm. Um, Brian Merchant says that you were influenced by typesetting and video games. Well, yeah. So yeah, you see. It's not like that I'm gonna go like, oh, let's let's study all this stuff or let's like closely analyze everything. But but if you see video games and that kind of and games, they often spend like a lot of time to like to tune it in such a way that it's like it's fun to to play to play the game, right? So mm -hmm. the animations are nice, or it's like uh, the way the controllers work, or the way you can control your little character or your little spaceship, whatever it is. Like it, it, usually they make it so that it's there's something cool about it or something feels good and that's why you want to keep playing. So <laughs> so I always wonder like why, if you make a, I don't know, a word processor or something, why does it have to be so super boring all of a sudden? <laughs> like it's something <laughs> you have to use the whole day. And it's like, and that's, 
and why it can be much more fun or intuitive and like mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be so so static and <laughs> so that's why whenever I work on something I try to add something to it that makes it feel more alive and not boring but I don't want to it's also hard to not overdo it because it shouldn't become like a, a crazy party when you're just trying to type your document right so it's a, it's a finding the right balance between the functionality and also the, the playfulness mm. uh, so. huh. yeah. do you remember um, Steve's reaction when he first saw the projector table rig um, I don't really remember I mean I remember that he looked at stuff and then there was a bunch of other people in the room too, I think then, and uh, I just don't really remember it. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I, I guess, I mean, I remember that there was excitement, but also a slight skepticism maybe about certain things, or mm -hmm. maybe the things that I find fun, if you can drag around this jelly looking picture or whatever, then I thought that was fun, but like, he was like, yeah, what are you gonna do with that, right? It's like. <laughs> So he thinks more like, I guess, practical, or how, how can I make a product out of this? And uh, But there was also, I think, enough stuff in there, in the demos that we had to show that, that, that he did see the point of, so. Huh. Um, but yeah, I don't remember the specifics uh, of that meeting, huh. so. Hmm. <laughs> Could you describe what it's like to be in meetings with Steve Jobs? Was, was he, was he <laughs> does he like to micromanage you, you interface decisions, or? Well, yeah, he was like, he was, you know, he wanted to see everything. He wanted to know all the little details, even the little preferences panel where it's like, what does this checkbox say? And what does this one say? And like, he, he was very particular about all the, all the details. And he, ideally, he didn't want to have any settings at all. But if you had to have them, they had to be like well thought out and they had to be, the wording had to be good. He would spend like sometimes minutes talking about the wording. How would we phrase this? And like, wow, he did, there's so much other stuff to do. But he would spend time on <laughs> on those things and uh, and I think it was good because it, it prevented like having like preferences panel with like 10,000 settings in it that you, no one knows uh, where to even find them and so he was really trying to make it uh, simplify it I guess and and get to the point so mm -hmm. and only add preferences or settings if they're really needed. So. Mm. How would he direct you guys? Um, well there's like there's times where he came in, walked in the room, but like he has an idea, he starts right, oh, I have this idea, let's blah, 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 I want this, I want that. You guys go build something or kind of try and figure this out. Or there were existing things that we were, we, we were working on and we would just go through the list of stuff that we had to review with him and we would just go, oh yeah, what about this? We have designs here, da da da, these examples, and then what, you know, which direction do you want to go? Or uh, and there was also enough times that none of it was good, so we had to start from scratch. And, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's often how we how we work. So it's pretty, I guess, structured and um, yeah, very focused on all these different the different uh, elements. So. Huh. so and yeah, very very particular about the visuals and the position of the, the icons or the styling or the uh, yeah. So we spend a lot of time on that. So sometimes it's pretty hard if he. That's if stuff w wasn't like what he wanted, and you couldn't quite figure out what he did want, so you just have to make ten things or more, or a hundred things, and he can, and then hopefully he could pick something <laughs> or like sort of that you get some idea of like in this direction, that direction, and um, and so it's a mix. So sometimes he was very clear about exactly what he wanted, and other times he wasn't sure, and he or at least he knew that what he didn't want, so uh, which can be helpful too. So. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, the, the funny thing is there's been times where we had the meeting with Steve and uh, he, afterwards we would tell, talk with the, the rest of the team to discuss what came out right uh, out of the meeting. And then we, I remember uh, sometimes a meeting would be, uh, I would say like, uh, oh, the meeting went, went great, but we have to basically start all over now. But <laughs> <laughs> So the thing was, the, the meeting went great because A, he probably, he didn't blew up, he didn't go like super mad at us, <laughs> and also we got some direction because this is not it, so. Right. <laughs> 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 so that was kind of, uh, kind of funny, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and of course there was also, uh, 
actually good meetings where he was like super happy with the designs and he because you hear a lot of stories i think of people talk about steve he can be super negative and like and there's definitely times where that happened it's very critical and negative but also there have been many times where he just loved that he thought it was amazing and he was like this is great and lots of enthusiasm and he wants to yeah, just keep it keep it going do more stuff and uh and then it's just super fun so uh so but yeah that was sometimes also the hard part that you didn't know depending on his mood or on how good or bad our designs were like what would what would happen so um so it's always pretty intense and a little bit, little bit scary sometimes to, <laughs> to go to those meetings so <laughs> especially also the frequency because we had them um, usually every two weeks uh and it would last about two hours or so um and for a while we had them every week yeah. and it used to be on mondays so yeah. the whole weekend you can be like oh my demo's Aww. not ready <laughs> and i don't want to get like yelled at on monday so <laughs> this worked the whole weekend to get get the stuff better so wow. uh so yeah definitely pretty intense but <laughs> what time of day on monday uh it would usually be like just after like at, at one o'clock or something just after lunch time or <laughs> that basically also meant that you barely got to have lunch because you're still scrambling to get your demos like ready <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway that's uh, but it was all worth it so. <laughs> yeah. so so then okay so then steve comes steve basically calls you and tells you that that you're wor you're going to work on a phone um so yeah what so when, when when did that happen like what year was that this was a uh I think this was in December of 2004. Okay. That's when, uh, yeah, he must have been, of course, talking with other people higher up, like, that they made this decision that that's mm -hmm. what they we're going to go for, and uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm like, wow, this is exciting, because I thought it was <coughs> exciting for, I, I don't even, I didn't even really care too much that it was a phone, I guess, but I liked the, f the form factor, the size. It was mm -hmm. an interesting challenge to kind of make stuff work on this small screen, like, and of course, if it's a phone, it means it's something that you will have with you all the time. So it's something you use a lot. But uh, just from from a design or an interaction design perspective, there's an interesting challenge to just make it work and uh, do something fun with it too. So it's mm. fun. Were were you disappointed that you weren't working on the larger tablet thing, or were you more excited now that there was a direction for a product? Um. Yeah, I was. I don't. I don't remember feeling disappointed I thought oh cool now we're gonna do this other thing and it's I thought that was great so yeah <laughs> so um, let's see what's so uh, at what point so you had by this point you already had a bunch of designs right? so you had a bunch of I guess demos did you have the rubber band effect already done at that point before the oh the no that came later that was that was while uh, I was working on that the scrolling list for the phone mm. uh, and I'm trying to remember if that was, if we, because at some point we had an actual screen that was actually the size of a phone with a big cable on it, but uh, but that may that may have been a little bit later. I think I probably, yeah, I don't remember what came first. Anyway, but at some point, yeah, I remember working on this demo where you scroll through the list and I had lots of times where because I was constantly changing stuff in my code, like I, I thought I was running the code, but then it wouldn't scroll. I'm like, oh, I guess I, I'm not running the code yet. Like, wait, uh, but then it was running. <laughs> so, but I'm like, oh wait, I'm scrolling the wrong direction because it's at the top of the list and it's not going to go any further. So mm. it just wouldn't move because it was at the top. So and then I, I started to think, like, oh, maybe I need to add some white space or something that you can see that it's at the top, right? Mm. But then still, if you s try to move it, it well, nothing will happen. It feels sort of weird, as if the program is just stuck or something. And mm. so that's when I started to think about what what can we do to make it feel still alive somehow that it's, it has some kind of gift to it. Or um, so I tried a couple of different things, I guess. And uh, yeah, one of them was like adding this sort of this uh, yeah thing where it, it it moves, but only at like half the rate of your m of your that your finger is moving, mm. just to get this feeling of like a, some kind of resistance and. <laughs> Uh, and then if you like go, it would just spring back to the top of the list, and and, um, and then from there, like um, if you scroll at higher speeds and it reaches the end, that it bounces back a little bit and all sure. that. So all the behaviors that that go with it, basically, to make it feel right. So it took a took a little while, but <laughs> but it was fun to work on. So <laughs> um, and I remember yeah showing that to Steve, and he got all super excited about it. So 
that was that was cool. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was like scrolling a, a list in the ad in the contacts is the very first thing that you guys were, were working on for the phone. Yes, yeah. yeah. yeah mm -hmm. the, I guess the main thing of your phone is like at that point, yeah, you scroll to find a name and you you call them. That's uh, <laughs> <yeah>. so. <laughs> um. And you had already had inertial, inertial scrolling um, already from the previous tablet. Yeah, thing. we had it on the tablet project yeah. too. So, yeah. So, hmm. Like this, yeah. In the particular case was like the, that picture of the website where you could just scroll right, through yeah, it and yeah. you flick it, and it would just. Uh, but that one didn't have that rubber banding at all. That was just it would just like have a hard stop at the end. So, mm. um, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> um, let's see. Are you able to talk about? Slide to unlock, or is that uh, something? Um, gosh, um, I don't know. Let's let's not do that. Okay. I mean, there's been so much yeah, that's uh, one of those stuff and lawsuits stuff, yeah. and things. It's just like I don't know. All right. It's unfortunate because it's you know, uh, I mean, it's an interesting uh, feature, or it's like it was sort of a necessary feature at the time to make it so that you can't accidentally unlock your phone when it's in your pocket or when you just pick it up or whatever. Um, and that's basically the solution we had at the time and I think it was probably a good one. And uh, But now you see that there's other solutions. There's fingerprint stuff or mm -hmm. in this announced today was the, f the face uh, recognition. And so, yeah, you won't need that, that particular gesture anymore or that uh, element for uh, unlocking the phone. So mm -hmm. um, now there's other ways to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How much did uh, dashboard influence the design of the apps? Uh, oh, like a lot. So uh, basically, well, again, you should talk with uh, Imran and mm -hmm. Greg. Uh, right, mentioned, like yeah. so, yeah, a lot of the styling and or just the idea of these widgets basically were, like, say the weather widget that we had in dashboard, like. It's like the phone mm -hmm. was sort of the, I, almost the uh, perfect shape for it. Like you fit like a nice like one like a weather widget right there, and it, so it had. Um, it didn't feel like a computer window or anything like that because of the way it was styled, and so that was definitely uh, the basis for a, lo a lot of the visual design. And and then, then the same for the the way you would interact with things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you wouldn't have the standard like Mac OS X controls <laughs> in one of those things because that didn't go with the whole feel of it, right? So. Uh, you have to rethink how you how you would uh, interact with it. So, mm -hmm. <coughs> and how um, how much were you thinking of browsing as a as an important feature at that point? Like the web browser, you mean? Or? Um, well, I think uh, well at that time we didn't realize how big of a deal it <laughs> was going to be, but it's definitely. Uh, I think the big w the big thing was that. You were you you, were, you could render a website the way it actually looked because at that time other phones would to have the sort of web experience, but it was like a different version of the website, and it was it was just not very good. And um, so this is the first time we were actually trying to make it work, even on this tiny screen. You could just like zoom in, and like um, later on, that double tap feature was added that you could just zoom perfectly into a piece of content, right, like a column, or um, but. Uh, yeah, that was the big thing to have. The whole web page was like visible right there on the little screen. So. Um, and was the home screen inspired by Exposé on the Mac? Um, yeah, well, like, yeah, because um, for a while, again, I uh, asked uh, Imran too, but uh, the, the home button mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the, his demos were, was called Exposé. <laughs> Uh -oh. and it would be almost as if you get an exp like all your apps would be visible somehow uh but then sort of miniaturized to like their little app icons the little tricklets and uh so it was sort of an expose thing for a little while hmm. or some derivative thereof so. hmm. and then later you know we call it the home home button hmm. Hmm. and s how did the n notion of the springboard um where I mean, the base of the home screen being the the place where you launch all the apps. Um, Come from. I guess that's probably again Imran. Okay. That's probably <laughs> the best to, uh, asked how he really came up with that. <laughs> so but I mean, that's not that different than the desktop. No, but just like the way that's 
laid out or something or yeah. Uh, uh, but I mean, the idea of having yeah. a kind of finder view before True. you launch. True. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's but you weren't consciously thinking in those terms. No. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the decision to do only a single home button, I mean, Greg Christie has talked about that and not mm -hmm. having back. Um, were you involved in that? Not really. A little bit, but not really. So okay. I don't okay. remember some of the specifics there. So. Could you talk about um, how well the, the whole team worked together on the project? Um, so let's see, Greg was your manager. Um, the other people on the team included Imran, Steve LeMay, Marcel Van Oss, yep. Freddie and Juris, and Patrick Kaufman was the project manager. Yeah, and there were some more people. Uh, yeah. Well, was also the team gradually started to grow anyway, growing. so it's there's times it's a little uh, I forget exactly who was there at what point, but <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we were we were a pretty small team, which was cool, and I think we worked pretty closely together. Um, in general, people had sort of their own sort of focus on on specific parts of it, uh -huh. uh, but we also worked together a lot uh, in in brainstorms and like reviews, design reviews, and um, or sometimes people would just collaborate on things and. Um, so it was a bit of a mix, but uh, but definitely, usually people own like a certain part, so mm. um, which makes it like, I guess easier to focus on stuff. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we would always review everyone's ideas and stuff. So I mean, we talked with Scott Forstall mm. and, uh, mm. and of course Steve, <laughs> Steve Jobs. So um, what part did you own? Um, well, depending on this stages are probably like uh, on the for, yeah, for, for the, some of these elements like the scrolling behaviors mm -hmm. I worked on the keyboard uh, quite a bit mm. too with some of the visual design and some of the behaviors of I don't know the, the way that the key pops up and how you can select your uh, accents on the character and mm. some of those kind of things and uh, I mean I didn't again work on it all by myself but like together with the others too but I, there's definitely things that we would focus on so mm -hmm. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, uh, transitions between if you launch an app or if you go back to an app or <laughs> uh, those kind of things. Or if you, well, that was a little bit later on, like on an iPad, the way if you rotate the screen, like an, well, actually on the on the iPhone, it's the same thing. Yeah, how the apps um, sort of morph from portrait to landscape mm. mode, and uh, th th it doesn't just like snap. It just it actually animates and like it morphs. So so I worked on a bunch of those things too, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So um, mostly like um, the, some of the dynamic things, the animations or transitions. Mm -hmm. so, uh, How about text selection? Oh yeah, text selection. Yeah. So they came after we did on the keyboard, and then later on we knew we needed to have or copy paste somehow. And if you want copy paste, you need to be able to select something. Um, so yeah, again, there are like a bunch of different explorations. Uh, there were a couple other people also you know, coming up with ideas there, and um, but yeah, we ended up with the little. Uh, some people call it the lollipops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so like stick with the circle on it, and you can just, even though it's tiny, you can just still just drag it around, and I guess the, I guess there's like a large invisible hit region, right? So uh, yeah, that became the the way to do text selection and. Uh, and copy and paste as well, because as soon as you have something selected, then we added that thing that points right at it, instead of having some kind of menu item that you have to mm -hmm. activate. Uh, it was just a right, right there in line. So, uh, and that's like I said earlier, that was kind of kind of the cool thing that we were that we could come up with, or we had to come up with new ways of doing stuff that are different from how it was done like before in on the Mac or PC, and specifically for for touch and. It had to be on such a small screen. So how how text selection, especially, it's all this precision that you need, and like how are you going to do that with your with your thumb? And <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but it's totally possible. Uh, so I thought that was a really fun and a super interesting challenge. Like same in the address book on the side, there's a little alphabet strip, mm. it's tiny little letters, yeah. but still you, you can you can pretty much like select the letter you want. So it's uh, I think that is just super cool, and that also turns out to work. You know, so I'm. You have to try a bunch of different things, but it's uh, we have to sort of see in your head that maybe this could work, and then you just have to go try. And, uh, 
uh, or you discover new things that you didn't even realize could, could work, so. Hmm. Text selection, was that was not in the original iPhone, right? No, yeah. no the first one didn't have that, so. Okay. Well, there was yeah. still insertion. You needed to be able to choose where you were typing, right? Uh, yeah, you could move the cursor around, I think. I'm pretty sure you could move the cursor. Just between text fields, right? Yeah. yeah. If you mistype one letter, you can just go back and change just that one letter, right? But right. you couldn't select anything. So. <coughs> But you could change the insertion point if you're writing an email or something. Yeah, you could yeah. move the insertion right. you could tap mm -hmm. or drag it. Uh, I'm not sure if at that point we already had that little loop magnifier thing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe because that came many later. Yeah. So I don't remember. <laughs> um, Greg Christie said that in January of 2015, Steve gave you guys an ultimatum to try to tell a more coherent story. Um, 2005. Oh, sorry, 2005. <laughs> Why did I say 2015? <laughs> uh, yeah, 2005. And that you had two weeks to, you had two weeks to do this, to get this demo up. So, um, so what did you already have and why wasn't it adequate? And, and what did you, do to bust your ass to get that well, done. Well, yeah, so, yeah, so we work with the, the whole team to kind of pull together some kind of coherent story there with all that. Because we had little elements of, yeah, yeah this is how you could scroll through a context list, or this is what the, I don't know, the music player could maybe look like, but there was no, I guess uh, we probably didn't have that idea of this, some kind of home screen or like, so all those basic things like how do you go to an app and how, what, what kind of different things do we have for mail and internet and all this. Um, that it's wasn't quite a solid story. Like, of course, you know, we sort of had an idea. If we work hard enough, we'll figure something out. But, but there was no clear, clear story there. So we worked really hard to make a, like one big demo. That's, uh, uh -huh. um, I see which one was, the, yeah. Because later on, we made created another much richer demo that had, much more detail in it. But, uh -huh. uh, but earlier on, yeah, we had to sort of prove to Steve that we could have, figure out the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, instead of a couple of little pieces, loose loose pieces, so, you know. So well yeah, he basically said that he would maybe give it to another team. So we're like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we we got it. So I guess. What were <laughs> what were the elements of the demo that you completed that that made him happy? Um, well, I guess like the what you mentioned earlier, the reference to the the dashboard widgets and stuff. So. Mm. I think that was a big one that uh, the whole styling and uh, just to have a, a better story about like what what are the apps like and uh, to tie them together so oh, okay so what the all the apps what all the apps on the phone are are going to be well I'm not sure I'm just trying to remember from from that specific demo what was in there um, but I guess we had, there was enough to make it feel like oh yeah this this can be now you can imagine all the other stuff on it too, so, <laughs> you know. So. And you had the home screen by then. Uh, I don't remember at that time what was, if there was a home button already or not yet, but. No, but the idea of like a home screen, screen with, I think so. with icons, okay. I think that's all, yeah. Huh. I don't remember exactly <laughs> at that specific time. But. Huh. And then there was the 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 bigger demo for that yeah. was given to that was like uh, several months later. Yeah, that was in May. That's when the demo was, and the big demo just basically meant that. Uh, well, it was like a demo for the presentation at the top 100 meeting, mm -hmm. where I guess basically all the the responsible people from all the different teams across Apple were like coming together to like talk about what the direction was and what everyone's doing and mm -hmm. so that's where Steve wanted to show that that uh, that demo so so we worked really hard to make something that looked like the real what the real thing should be <laughs> <laughs> so so you could scroll through listen music and play music and any every song would work and you could we could play touch all these things and uh, you can back home you could get a phone call and, and you could go check out the weather and you could go see the internet and the, all that stuff was like uh, part of that, so huh. um, so that was a lot of work to kind of make it l actually 
mostly interactive or enough that you would think it's all interactive mm -hmm. um, just to tell the whole story and that people go oh wow yeah this is you've, you've already seen what it's going to be basically even though not all the details were figured out but uh, but yeah that was that was a bunch of hard work to uh, to pull that off um. and how much of a priority was putting uh, the iPod into the iPhone iPod like features um, well I guess I was going to get to that later. Oh, yeah. later but yeah. um, no, no. Um, the how much of the ev eventual like Steve keynote demo was present in that that top one hundred demo? Like how uh, much? Of well, I mean, what Steve showed at, at in MacWorld that was, of course, the the real thing. Right. So there's way more stuff was finished and done. In the, but right. The so demo it was engineered, but but the engineered. prototype of the interface was was that close? A lot of it was pretty close. If you would see it now, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that, that basically looks like an iPhone, yeah. Uh, yeah. There was a little bit of smoke and mirrors in certain places, right. where you can only tap on certain things. There was just one sequence that would work. But some of them were more interactive. You could, like, like with the music one, you could scroll through the whole list, and you mm -hmm. pick any song it would play, and like all that stuff. So you could change the volume, and um, so it was all working. So, huh. But I guess the keyboard was probably not working then, or, mm. like, <laughs> you know. Um, so let's see, all the various apps, so, um, were you, um, who worked on the design of Safari, including the Zoom in Safari? Um, well, I worked on an early demo for that too, where mm -hmm. it just, uh, I'm trying to remember, it was a pretty basic one where it, it would start out showing scaled down version of the web page it would fit on your screen and you could tap on like a an input field somewhere to p type your password or whatever so you tap it and it would zoom into it and then you would get a keyboard and you just tap and it would just fill in the word <laughs> and then but just to show that okay this would be with the pinch zoom and you could do this and if you tap it would just zoom in and but that was sort of the just the basic idea of it and it didn't have that particular demo didn't have too much other detail in there yet but mm -hmm. but um yeah, I guess the key thing was that you could see the whole the entire website. So. Hmm. And then the phone app, um, including visual voicemail. Oh uh, yeah, I mean we've all like uh, helped with the brainstorms and all that kind of stuff. But like there was other people like Freddie and Zuris were working on that, and mm -hmm. some other people too. So it's uh, yeah, I didn't work on that specifically. Mm -hmm. so. Um. So what wh um, what other apps were you primarily responsible for designing? Um, well, I didn't. I, f I feel like I didn't do any specific apps. It's just like elements of it, like s some of the interaction, some of the behaviors. Like mm -hmm. I don't know, like in photos, like there's the some of the pin zoom behaviors, but also if you swipe it, say you zoom into a picture and you s you scroll to the to the side, hmm. the first time it will bounce. But if you do it again, then it will go to the next image on your list, mm -hmm. right? So, so there's like subtle little behaviors in there that I, I, I helped out with, like trying to figure out or define how, how that would feel, so that you don't accidentally go to the next picture where you just you were just zoomed in and you happen to reach the border. <laughs> uh, just trying to solve those those kind of uh, things. Right. Um, so, yeah. So I, I feel like I haven't I haven't really worked on. Just like a specific app or something, right. <laughs> just details uh, or certain behaviors that apply to many things, I guess. So. Right. So it's like similar, similar to what on on the Mac, you you were basically overall you know, dealing with yeah. sort of specific interactions on in multiple apps or across the system. Yeah. And not specifically owning any, any particular app. Yeah. There may be. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. In general, you could say that. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay. Um. How did the the notion of um, the, the way that a lot of early iOS uh, iPhone apps worked, where you would select something from a list and it would dive down into another screen, mm -hmm. and then maybe you could have multiple lists and you would just keep diving down? Where did that come from? Um, I guess the first time we needed that for the f iPhone was with. Uh, with the music player where you just drill down like artist, album, mm -hmm. and then a little song, list of songs, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, 
or even in the phone app, I guess you could do the same. You, you have a list of names, you, you pick one and it slides over to a list of uh, the phone numbers for that person, right? So, uh -huh. so or it could be a, a group <laughs> uh -huh. uh, inside of it, so. How did how, how did that idea come about to do it that way? I don't know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't remember. Right. Um, I guess the iPod all used to do the slide oh yeah, over here, so true, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's similar to that. So. Oh. Okay. So, at what point were you asked to work on the um, the P1 iPod phone design? Because you know everything you had been doing was on the touchscreen yeah. version of the phone. So now, uh, but then now you know there was this iPod phone also going on. That right. at what point did did you find out about that and then were assigned to work on that? Um, yeah, this is like I don't remember the date, but I was like probably a couple months after that big demo the that big was done. Like so, yeah. I think that. Because Steve called a big meeting with a bunch of people where you want to talk about this because he thought that the um, P2 the, or the iPhone, the touchscreen iPhone basically, that there were too many uncertainties. Uh, uh, like it's a research product. He's like, this could take years. We don't know when this is going to be done. And it's like, let's do something that we know how to, we can do. And that's basically sort of what he said, I guess. And uh, and we're going to do this like iPod-based phone. And it's like based on the Nano small thing and um, so that's the direction where we're going for a while so and put the touchscreen phone on hold so hmm. um, so yeah so we started to explore how with the click wheel how are you gonna make a phone call or how are you gonna type uh, a, a text message to someone or uh, so pretty tricky stuff but uh, but we got pretty far with it which is cool but, uh, so <laughs> so most most of the mm. most of the team stopped working on the touchscreen version and just moved over to the the iPod version during that um, well, we worked with the, like me and Imran, and I don't remember with small a couple of people on on it, and uh, so not everybody. Not everybody, because I think still, or st I uh, I don't remember if I, the other project was still going, and but there was also other like Mac OS ten stuff as well, right? So there was oh, right. plenty plenty of work to be done, regardless. So, but yeah, we went to try and do uh, do stuff with the click wheel, so, uh, which which is also kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> So how um, you came up with the predictive predictive typing the for for the scroll wheel? Oh uh, yeah. To well, there there was a thing where because it, it takes so much effort to choose all the letters from the alphabet. <laughs> yeah. So I thought like, well, if you choose the letter H or something, then maybe above the all the little alphabet letters, we show the word that could be the most likely one that you type. So it's just like hello, for example, mm -hmm. and then but you can just select that word. Uh, and then you can start typing the next word, but then it could already like have uh, the most likely word again showing before you've even typed the next letter. Uh, it could make the best guess. Like if you've typed other stuff in the past, if you so say hello, how are you, mm -hmm. then maybe the word how is going to show in that bar on the top there, so you don't have to type anything. So you can just. It's already pre-selected, so if you just press the middle button, it says hello, how, and then are you. It's like likely words to follow, so it, it goes really, really quick that mm -hmm. way. So, um, and that demo that I built, like, had it would it would just build up a database as you go. So anything yeah. you type, it would sort of store, and it would just sort of learn what what kind of things you you or which words get are followed by others. So. Um, so that worked pretty well for uh, for that little click wheel thing. So, um, but uh, but yeah, that's not compared to how fast you can type on a touchscreen yeah. iPhone. But <laughs> but at least it was something. So. Was that inspired by anything, or was it um, the idea of having? The I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I, I just thought that that was a, a nice way to do it. <laughs> just mm, to add okay. the words right there. So. Yeah. Um. Um, how did you, how, how difficult was it to make the scroll wheel work for the phone? Uh, what well the challenges were there? Well, the hard part is like, well, there's the, just the physical, they have to build a certain way and, and the sensing and, but also, if, yeah, from a user interface design perspective, like, 
or the, the way you select stuff and the way you can navigate the the, st the menu structures and uh, it just it's just very limited with just like that one scroll wheel and and, and the button and mm -hmm. so it's just yeah harder to make it super intuitive <laughs> yeah <laughs> so. but for the predictive text though did you look at all at like uh, SMS on dumb phones predictive um, uh, yeah I guess on on uh, those simple phones then yeah, I, I, I would I would yeah I would they had some kind of auto uh, completions or whatever you call it right so mm -hmm. uh, but I don't remember but they have more of things where you type a bunch of numbers and it would figure out which word that would map to them right instead of having to tap three times on the on the one key and six th uh, three th and two times in the other one you can just like type this number and then it makes the best word out of it hmm. that's the one that I it was called oh. t9 I think uh, but the the ones that actually are the complete words I don't remember seeing that at that time but okay. hmm. um, maybe it was around but I, I hadn't seen it so um. hmm. how did you how did you feel about the two competing projects p1 and p2 um, well I, I I don't I don't think there were in my mind I, I didn't see it as a, as a competition it was just like which one do we do first mm -hmm. <laughs> and I also thought that was a super cool an interesting challenge to, mm -hmm. to make it work somehow and and the thing was pretty cool too it was a small it was like kind of a rugged little thing it was just a phone and, and very basic mm -hmm. so I I thought cool. it was a, a nice product as well and mm -hmm. it didn't have the power of the, the real iPhone but <laughs> it was definitely a practical little thing as well so mm -hmm. so you think it could have actually worked like it could have been it could have been how do you um, think it would have done as a product uh, I think it would have been all right. I don't know. It's like a, a fancier, or it's just like a, a slightly more capable iPod <laughs> because, or iPod Nano, whatever you call it. Like, so it would have been okay, and it would have been because it was more rugged, easier to just toss in your bag or whatever. And like, uh, but it was limited in many ways, like compared with a touchscreen iPhone mm -hmm. because. Your, if you think about it, like your f your your touchscreen iPhone is not a, it's barely a phone because you barely use that f functionality because <laughs> you use the internet and chat and this and that and the photos and the majority is is not the phone part really mm. and that little guy it was I guess the music and your phone, mm. but everything else would have not been so great on it I think so. No web browsing and no. <laughs> so it wouldn't have been a web browser. Mm. It yeah, but it would have been a feature phone, not a smartphone. With yeah, the, with music added. That's basically. what I think. Yeah. So. And how? But the rocker came in. Two thousand five, right? The rocker. Right, because I mean, how with much? With the iTunes thing on it. Because uh, yeah. isn't yeah. it? I mean, essentially, it's the same target uses, right? To have a phone with music. I mean, a feature phone with yeah. music. I guess. I mean, I that was. I didn't it's more like the reverse. It's more like a, an iPod with a phone. <laughs> right. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it was an iPod I mean with a phone. But you don't get smartphone. In both yeah. cases, right. you're not getting general smartphone features. Right. You're but yeah, it's like, I mean, I wasn't like thinking about that stuff really. Uh, the rocker. Like that, you know, how would the product is positioned as a mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, the UI, now how can we make this work? And like, uh, and it wasn't at all my decision, like whether this should be a product yes or no, or like, because, uh, I thought both of them were kind of cool and just, yeah, it's a very different product, yeah, so. But the rocker um, you were aware of at that time? Um, yeah, I think so. That was around that time then, right? Yeah. With, with the iTunes, yeah. Yeah, 2005. I mean, it was. But it didn't make a big impression on. It was yeah, I thought it was a little weird Nano. personally, but like, <laughs> I thought it was strange that there was an Apple thing inside someone else's phone that didn't seem like right to me, but <laughs> uh, anyway, that was what, what happened, so. So there were no there were no multiple apps in in this version, right? There was just the iPod. It was the iPod user interface, so you could scroll through the list in the main menu through like I forgot what's in there. Yeah, you know, music, phone calls, and you probably have like the yeah, text messaging That's and then enough. settings mm -hmm. and like I don't know what else, so uh, alarm clock and <laughs> that kind of stuff. Right. So just basic basic uh, stuff. So. Mm. 
Um, so then at what point did the decision come down to stop doing the, the P1 phone? Um, well, I don't remember when exactly that was, but we were pretty far along with it. Huh. A lot of stuff was figured out, even on the hardware side, I think they were pretty close as well. But How long did I you I think get? Steve went like, you know, this is probably not uh, a great product. If I could if because he'd seen that what the iPhone was going to be, and he probably uh, I think he I think he made the right decision that go like this is not an iPhone this is like let's go for this this really cool thing mm -hmm. <laughs> that's way more of a future and like and I think uh, yeah he was right <laughs> so how how long had you get had you guys worked on it at that point uh, a couple months uh, maybe longer I'm not sure half a year yeah something like that maybe. I don't remember. <laughs> so. um, in terms of like the, I mean, just thinking about the politics of it, like the HI group reported to, did the HI group report to Forstall in the chain of, in the chain or? Yeah, at that time, like uh, iPhone time, yeah. Right. Yep. So was it weird that like you were also doing this thing for the other group, even though you're reporting to Forstall? The uh, oh the iPod one. Yeah, the iPod one. Yeah, I mean, uh, in there was some weirdness there. Yeah, <laughs> which what we uh, I mean we can help with that was just sort of happened, I guess. But yeah, I can imagine. Uh, I mean, I didn't even think about it right away, but later I'm like, yeah, it's kind of weird because we're basically <laughs> now taking the other people's projects, sort of, or we're, we're sort of made to do this. Um, but also totally happy to work together or whatever. Like yeah. uh, I'm fine with it. So <laughs> I just want to make some cool product. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, there was definitely I could sense there was some some political stuff going on. Huh. So, huh. but I usually try to stay out of that if I can. <laughs> 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 so, um, so then of course the the other you know big interface thing was that um, <coughs> you know the touch. To 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 do a touchscreen phone, you had to have a virtual keyboard. Um, how did did was there any pushback on on not having a physical keyboard from anywhere? Oh yeah, a lot of people were like, oh, you have to have. Or there was in general some kind of. Well, I guess the reaction f more from the outside world seemed that the BlackBerry users or whatever, like they were used to the keyboard and like. You have to have it, and but I but this is before. Like this is why you're still working on the phone, right? So oh right, okay. So yeah, internally, I was there any was there? Well, any we resistance? knew it was going to be tricky to get it to work, but we've already done some keyboard stuff on the bigger mm. touchscreen, and so definitely, yeah. You go like, oh, now it has to be on an even smaller screen. Like this is going to be, <laughs> this is not going to be easy. So <laughs> so it took us a long time. Like and uh, other engineers worked on it, and like. Mm. Come up with ideas, like all kinds of different things, to just see, like, how can we, yeah, make something that actually where you can type on. <laughs> uh, and that was a bit of a struggle. And there were some interesting ideas or stuff that worked like really quite well, where you can't like do it wrong really, but then it would be awkward. You have to do too much taps or too many swipes, or mm. uh, or uh, it would just look too weird that you don't recognize it as a normal keyboard and. I think in the end, uh, Steve decided that it needed to be like a QWERTY keyboard. If of course, if that can work well, mm -hmm. because as you see it, you're like, oh yeah, keyboard, no big deal. Everyone knows what that is. <laughs> you know how to type it. You don't have to learn anything. It's like you have to be a little bit more careful, I guess. Uh, but then there's like a bunch of smart people that figured out like clever algorithms how, uh, if you type a word, that it makes the best out of it, and even if you're a little off, it's still corrects it and all that, and so it ends up working pretty well. I mean, maybe it can still get better, but it's it's definitely quite good for Because yeah. first we thought, like, I'm not sure if this is going to work at all. <laughs> so it's pretty impressive. And were, you oh, yeah. were you familiar at all with uh, the Simon, which had tried to do a uh, soft keyboard back in 94? No, I don't. I, I okay. guess I've heard Simon, b the name before, but like, I don't, I haven't seen that, so but the, not the keyboard. So again, you were you guys are doing clean sheet of paper, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we weren't, or I, at least I wasn't actively like researching what's already out there or what's been done. Like we just like, oh, let's just uh, dive in and let's make 
try and make something. <laughs> so. And the keyboard, I mean, there was a contest, right? Like you opened up keyboard design to the engineers as well. Like right. Everybody was designing keyboards. Yeah. Yeah, I, th that's what I was saying. Like yeah. a lot of people were trying to come up with some way to, to make this work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was kind of cool to uh, do it that way. <laughs> because it was like um, that critical of a problem, so you wanted as many people coming with yeah, ideas. Yeah, I guess if that, if, if that wasn't solved, that problem, then you don't have a real product. If you can't type on it, then it's like going to be problem, <laughs> a big problem so for everything, like your passwords, your internet, your text messaging, like all that stuff it won't work then, right? So it's, yeah. uh, it's a big deal. Huh. So if you take it away from, as a physical thing, it has to be replaced with some, something else. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. There was no consideration of doing a graffiti, like palm style graffiti thing with your Oh, there was probably one of the ideas too, yeah. like where you r write the letters and stuff, but it's or Newton also. That's not very fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, or some sort of gesture-based thing. Yeah, I guess on some other phones they had like, I forgot what it's called. It's a different sort of uh, swipe. Yeah, we it's different sort of uh, letters that are easier to do the swipe gestures, right? So oh well, yeah, the uh, the palm made simplified. Oh, that, that is it. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, it's actually faster than uh, the iPhone keyboard. Oh really? But slower yeah. than the uh, BlackBerry keyboard. Actually, yeah. Um, yeah, so a, a whole variety uh, was explored there for sure. Yeah. Um, so let's go back and talk about the the collaboration with the uh, engineering software engineering team. So, what were your initial interactions with with the team like? You know, what, what was it like when they first started moving in to your floor, and you know, and you're you're starting to work with them. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's sort of a gradual start, and uh, there were specific things like, of course, with uh, uh, when they started to implement the, the scrolling behaviors, and like people like uh, Scott Hers, and mm -hmm. uh, also Andrew Platzer, and um, and then, gosh, I'm just trying to think of so many different things were going on, <laughs> and of course, Safari and Steve Williamson, and mm. uh, to get the web stuff to work, and then th with the zooming and all the those behaviors around there. Uh -huh. um, gosh, uh, who was disclosed gosh. first to see the UI? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Craig, Greg no uh, Novik was there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, who else? Gosh, uh, I feel bad if I forget people's names. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I don't quite remember who. Uh, yeah. So how closely did you guys work with them? Uh, well, it depends on what kind of features mm -hmm. were going on, because the whole bunch of stuff happened that was a little bit lower level too, but uh, mm -hmm. UI-wise, like, yeah, pretty closely if it's like important stuff. And mm -hmm. I worked like, for example, like Ken Crescenda, we worked like a ton on like all the details on the keyboard and the text selection and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, yeah, it's fun. So. Hmm. <laughs> what was that back and forth like in terms of you know, them implementing something and then trying to match your design. Um, did did the design ever change in response or, you know? Uh, well, I mean, yeah, so uh, I, I'm just trying to think of an example now, but like there's times where you, yeah, if it gets implemented for real with, with the full on everything working, then there's times where you run into things where you, you hadn't thought of before. You're like, oh, this is not really working or it's like, <laughs> different than we thought and maybe we need to do something different. So huh. that happens uh, for sure. So uh, and sometimes n something new comes out of it that's actually better, even better than we thought of before. Huh. So <laughs> that's also cool. So huh. um, yeah, and I always find it amazing when stuff is actually built and it becomes like, it's a real, it's a real thing. You can really use it. It's not just some demo. <laughs> so it's pretty exciting. So then, was there, sorry, was there a particular thing that you're? No, 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 mind? no. no it's just sort of, yeah. just in general, yeah. the kind of the kind of interaction, the kind of collaboration with with engineering, mm -hmm. how, you know, from the design side. How did that work? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. I mean, it depends sometimes on what feature it is or wh mm -hmm. what stage we're in. In this case, a lot of stuff. The the very beginning of the whole. Um, I guess you could call it the iOS look and feel and mm -hmm. behaviors was done before 
engineering was involved, really. Mm -hmm. But of course, Scott Forster was involved. So he he saw what was going on, but other people didn't really see it until the demo was at a certain certain point, certain level. Mm. And that's what's like, well, this is going to be the thing. And of course, then it, there's still lots of discussion or, uh, like about how it should be really built, but um, but the direction was set. So, huh. uh, and in other cases, or in Mac, Mac OS 10, there's been plenty of times where the features sort of <coughs> kind of still change while they're being built. And mm -hmm. uh, and but I guess with some of the iPhone f things are similar. Um, um, s you mentioned Scott Forstall. Um, how early did he? How early did he um, know about everything, and how how much input did he have in the earlier designs? Um. Well, he was like. There from the pretty from much the beginning, from the beginning, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he was was I mean, when as soon as you got the call that you were doing the phone, he was already in charge of that. From from that point. Um. Well, I'm not sure if at that point, all the software group because there wasn't because he was real forming the group, right? But he. But I'm not sure that could have been around just around that time. I, I'm not aware of like at what point that that happened because there was no. In the, the very early beginnings of that iPhone project, whatever, the, it wasn't. It was just exploration, so there was not, there was no software to be built mm. yet, uh, or not, at least not from a UI perspective, as far as I know. So, uh, so I'm not sure what point. It must have been pretty early on that, like, mm. uh, yeah, he got uh, assigned to to go do this, <laughs> but <laughs> he signed up for it. I don't know how that happened. So, right. yeah. but did he have any input in in into the designs? Well, yeah, I mean, he was always in the meetings too, and he was like, we, have, we spent lots and lots of hours of talking through every little detail, and hmm. uh, so we had a, uh, a lot of input as well, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how important was it to not do certain things in the first iPhone, like copy and paste or multitasking? Oh, right. um, well, I think that, um, it's uh, you have to really make choices because uh, it's already a, a big and complicated project with a lot of stuff going on, and you got to focus on on the things that are most important f for a successful product, and all the additional things like a copy and paste. And if you don't have it in the first version, it's not the worst thing because there's so much other good stuff that people are willing to wait like for a next software update or whatever it is that <laughs> where you do get that function. Because obviously there must be some way to add it in. <laughs> But the product is not like dependent on it, right? Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, you have to make those those trade-offs. So, and I guess Steve, or uh, I don't know who made the decisions, uh, but you pick the right apps and the right things that you want in there, and then you go from there. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's important to not do everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. As long as the things that you do have, the, those are built like like well, mm -hmm. so that you have the overall fu quality uh, and feel of the product. So. Um, after the you stopped working on the P1 iPod phone, how much? And then you're starting to, you know, going back to the P2 f um, touch phone again. Yeah. How much more work was there between then and and the demo and, and the big keynote? Oh, um, well, like there was a lot more d like finer details to work out, like because we had a bigger picture, but then, yeah. Uh, there are so many sm smaller things that need to be resolved to make everything work well, and so it still takes a lot of time. And uh, it's not as super exciting at that time anymore mm -hmm. uh, compared to with the early beginning, where it's all super new and you do all the big, big ideas. And then, mm -hmm. I mean, of course, later on there's also still ideas to kind of uh, resolve stuff, but uh, it just gets more into the, the smaller things just to make it all work well. So, hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, could you talk about the keynote itself? Um, how much work did you have to do for the keynote? Uh, I didn't have to do much at all. Okay. <laughs> 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 I think all engineering was sweating at the because that's at that point the design was basically all that design was stuff was like was done like you know of course little things here and there maybe but in general 
that was already like uh, so f from for the it was mainly engineering they were yeah. like like that must have been a tough time to get it all to work <laughs> 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 oh my gosh so i'm impressed <laughs> so um were you actually in the room during the keynote yeah, 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 yeah. yeah yeah how was that oh it's just so exciting to like to hear all the, the cheering and like and to steve to see steve uh, present that like uh it was just amazing so it's very cool yeah. do you have any particular memories of that day uh well i have my parents uh, in town and oh, wow. that was amazing so uh for them to see that too and uh yeah it's just something special so um you know remember at the end of the the keynote like all the press is like by the stage by steve and then uh i'm standing sort of also by the stage but like like just away from all the crowd and and at some point, Steve, he notices me and he's like, he, he's with all this press people and stuff, but he's like, oh, and he walks, he walks over to my side and he goes, he says, wow, it's like, he, he's like, uh, yeah, I can, I still remember the first time you showed me the scrolling stuff and all that. And he's like, all ex excited. And uh, but that was kind of cool that he made like a uh, game over to say, uh, like say uh, something so <laughs> <laughs> pretty special. So, yeah. <laughs> um. And then how much work um was there still to do after the keynote for you um well i mean we were i guess i'm just trying to remember like we were really far with stuff but like i said there's still like lots of little details and things that had to be mm -hmm. like worked out especially for like the real final thing because at that point it wasn't quite final yet because it still had to go through uh the testing as well right and um um and I guess we were already working on uh, new th other stuff like copy paste and all that like enhancement. So oh, you were already working um, on that even. I think we were already. Early. Yeah, I think we were already. Because that didn't ship until. Yeah, but that was already in the works a while before. Wow. Because we knew that we wanted that. So, right. uh, and I'm not sure exactly when when that started, but uh, that was. Yeah, that was could have been around that time. So. Hmm. Wow. Because it still took like half a year or so before we actually shipped that phone, right? So yeah, the first one. So yeah. because in January was the announcement, and in June, or end June, so there was months in between, and we we knew that we wanted copy paste and mm. a couple other things. So, but again, I'm not 100% sure when that started. So, hmm. yeah. I think Greg mentioned that there were three things that still needed to be designed: mail was redesigned, calendar, and YouTube. Um, so were you working on those things or? Mm, not directly. I mean, it was, we were, of course, talking about this stuff in our meetings and all that, but yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so did you, did you, did you have a, did you test the phone before it shipped? <coughs> did you have like a, did you have a phone, in, you know, that you were walking around with before it was shipping? Yeah, I had a phone to, to, uh, to test, so. Which is cool, but also <laughs> not cool because <laughs> one is like you had to really hide it, <laughs> mm. and also sometimes because yeah the software wasn't quite perfect, so all of a sudden the battery would be dead or something <laughs> or that kind of stuff. So it's uh, <laughs> but it was also very cool to, to use an actual iPhone, so it's just something special. So yeah. <laughs> were you find <laughs> um, were, you, were you finding lots of bugs? Um, were you? Well, yeah, you find stuff that's not quite right, or like, yeah. I mean, that was the whole point of it, of course, to uh, to use one for uh, for a while, and uh, but yeah, you definitely find find some bugs. <laughs> How long did you have it before the shipping? Uh, uh, quite a while. I, uh, I I think I had one of the first the first batch, basically. Uh, which I'm not sure when that was. When was that, that was that before the keynote or after the keynote? It was before the keynote. Before so the keynote. Yeah. But months, yeah. not months, not weeks. Uh, it's at least six months more than that. Right. <coughs> yeah, hmm. don't remember specifically, but uh, quite a while. So, hmm. um, yeah, like I said, it's it's hard because you have to like hide it. <laughs> 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 so, which is difficult with the phone, but. Especially when people know that there's <laughs> no stuff already, and it's like. <laughs> 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 
Um, what was the last thing that you worked on before the phone shipped? Um, hmm. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if it's one specific thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what was it like for you the day that it actually did ship? Uh, well, uh, super exciting, of course, that it's finally out and great to see how many people got so excited about it and the, the, the lines uh, at the Apple store and it was just like unimaginable. It was just yeah, uh, very cool to see that. Mm -hmm. I've never seen before that so many people are so excited. So, um. <laughs> Did you go to visit any of the lines? Or? Oh yeah, we went to go check it out and <laughs> wait at the Apple store and see the people when the open doors open and people cheering, walking in and it's just uh, pretty cool. <laughs> so, um. Um, <coughs> so earlier when I mentioned you know, brush metal on OS X, um, and of course the iPhone also got a lot of um, skeuomorphism. Um, it, it seemed like it got more more pronounced in the later versions of iOS, right? With like Game Center, the felt, and the faux leather. Um, right. So you mentioned that was like directly coming from Steve, that that, that design direction. Yeah, Steve was like, uh, for the most part, he was like really, uh, yeah, he really was really into that. He cared about the uses of certain uh, textures and materials, and so he spent a lot of time on that too. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, which is fine. It gives us a certain character. Sometimes, like. Just from a design perspective, I mean, I like I like the quality as well, and I like that it has a certain kind of warmth to it or a certain kind of personality. But um, as long as the functionality is also uh, mm -hmm. on par, then yeah. so there's some cases where I wish that I guess the functionality could have been better, mm -hmm. and if we spent more time on a leather texture or whatever, and instead of making the the actual functionality of the app like better, but hmm. but that's always the, the trade off the balance. It's like, but it definitely has, if you look at the other apps or those things that they have a certain, they're unmistakable like Apple and they have a certain kind of quality to them. And although now these days you see less of it, so it's, it comes with waves, I guess. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then with the, with, so now that the iPhone had shipped, I mean, you mentioned, um, you guys started working on copy paste. Um, <coughs> what other things were you were you were you were you doing um, for the next version? Well, there was the also the uh, the whole international or the the multi uh, the localization. Mm. So yeah, for a keyboard, that meant like oh yeah, we need Greek and Thai and this and that and like there's all these different like keyboard layouts and different characters and like how you would yeah. enter that and Chinese and Japanese and. Um, it, it's a big it's a big project so it's a lot of a lot of stuff there so and you need people that understand these languages and like uh, so it's it's a it's a big uh, undertaking to mm -hmm. get all that figured out so hmm. so a lot of a lot of that kind of stuff happened stuff that f from a distance you don't even realize how much work goes in it but has to happen so hmm. for to make it work for all these countries so yeah um, and of course, adding new features or mm -hmm. making it more just feature rich or more complete, like for mail that you can like, I don't know, I don't know a good example now, but you can, well, with attachments or with this or that mm -hmm. and like how, how, how that all works and because um, I'm not sure if like the first version you were able to send email a photo from the photos app or something. So later uh -huh. on, we added that kind of stuff and like, mm -hmm. uh, how does that work and how does it animate or what kind of state are you in when when you're in the middle of that, and um, and multitasking got added later, and uh, could you talk a little bit about that multitasking? I mean, you talked about that. So, so multitasking and copy and paste both came out in iOS four, correct? Uh, Was that is that correct? I don't I don't remember <laughs> what's what what was in what version. So <laughs> but I thought copy and paste was before, but maybe oh, I'm trying to wrong. So hmm. Maybe maybe it was before. I'm, I don't remember. Um, yeah, how, 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 how was it working on the, both of those two features? 
Um, the um, multitasking yeah. thing, or? Um, well, I guess, I mean, I, I didn't work on that a, a lot. Uh, yeah, I think it, like, Imran did a whole bunch of work on that too. Okay. There was some stuff, with, I'm trying to remember with like some of the transitions, how you go from one app to the other, like visually how it animates and all that. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't remember a specific so. Um, okay. Um, so then the, the next big thing was the iPad, um, yeah. with, especially with iOS 3. Um, There's whole new ways of navigating with the iPad now. Um, could you talk a little bit about that? Um, well, it wasn't like a totally new way. It was like a similar uh, structure, basically, but we had to deal with w way more screen space now. So you have to rethink some of the apps or, or the layouts. And mm -hmm. there's almost certain cases give too much space because we're used to designing for the small iPhone screen and all of a sudden now it's like a huge uh, screen area <laughs> relative and uh, so for some apps it was a little tricky to how to how to then f make use of that space in a good way mm -hmm. so so the, it took actually longer than expected some of these uh, hmm. apps to make sense out of it so um, which was surprising in some ways because you think, oh now we have all this space so uh, how hard can it be but yeah <laughs> there's more more to it so um, yeah, so. Was like the, I mean, coming up with popovers, was that like a, was that, was that sort of a radical change or was that like? Um, yeah, I guess that was just uh, trying to find some solutions for how to yeah, deal with that on, on the phone. It wasn't, it was a different kind of uh, <coughs> situation just because of the space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what to say about it. <laughs> okay. Um, did you do any work on Siri later on, like for the no. interface? No. Oh. Um, what about the Apple Maps? Did you work on that at all later? Mm -mm. No. No. All right. Um, what about the redesign of the UI in iOS seven? I like don't work on that either. So you didn't work on that. Uh, okay. Um, were you involved in, in any of the later later products like Apple TV or Watch? Just very little bit. In the, yeah, at some point I left Apple, but yeah, so it's just uh, but, but just before that, yes, just a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, but not 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 alone. So. Right. So y you um, left Apple in t 2013. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, was it uh, was it just the right time to move on or? Yeah, I, I mean, been there for almost 15 years then at that point and. Uh, I was ready for a break, <laughs> and uh, combination of stuff. Also, I missed the Steve too, I guess, because mm. I was. I guess I, I mean more people did, of course, but uh, I had to work with him pretty closely, and it's sort of a, it was a big part of my career, I guess, and mm. felt like, yeah, I just really missed that too. Mm. Um, and the other thing was like, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of patent lawsuits going on, uh. and. Um, I got involved in those quite a bit too, so a lot of depositions and all mm. that kind of stuff, and I got a little tired of that too. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt like it was affecting like how I was feeling about my work. I was like, well, <laughs> if I'm working on stuff now, new ideas, like, like this means that like couple, like down the line I'm going to be in some other deposition about <laughs> this what I'm doing now, or like, I started to feel more like that, and mm. I that was I felt that in the hanging out of over my head uh, the whole time or something like that and uh, I just didn't like that feeling <laughs> hmm. uh, and so a combination of these things not that one of them was like necessarily th th enough reason to leave but at some point I felt like you know it's been it's been a good run or like time to just you know take a break so hmm. it was nice <laughs> for sure <laughs> and it was it was an amazing time to have worked on all these things at Apple so with a lot of great people and pretty cool so especially if you see now how how the products gets used around mm -hmm. the world and it's just uh, pretty incredible. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did you feel when Steve passed away? Uh, I mean, it was that was very difficult. I mean, it was of course we could we see, could see it coming because he wasn't well for like a long time mm -hmm. with little ups and downs and all that. And uh, but yeah, it was very sad. So for sure. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. 
So how would you summarize your time at Apple, um, especially working on the phone? And um, well, that was like a, an amazing, yeah, I guess opportunity. We were, in a way, super lucky that we got to work on that stuff in, in that kind of setup with like a company that can pull that off. And it's a risky project because it's not easy to do at all. Like it's difficult on, on every level, it seems. <laughs> Uh, difficult from the lower level, like the hardware stuff, to the software, to the UI. E everything is complicated, or it's like new stuff has to be invented. Mm -hmm. To like the multi-touch, the glass screens, the the whole industrial design, like, and then the deals with AT and T or the cell cell providers, and all that. Everything combined, and then the Apple stores and the whole everything, the whole infrastructure for the and then iTunes and. There's so many parts to it. It's just like incredible. So it's it's like a unique sort of m moment in time where you, you get to do and uh, work on a on, on such a product, and it's yeah, and it's just super special, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's been like a super like great honor that uh, our team got to work on that stuff. So mm -hmm. it's uh, and and the, and the funny thing is, in some ways, while you're in the middle of it, it doesn't doesn't feel like that. <laughs> a little bit, of course, oh, cool, it's exciting stuff, but also a lot of stuff is difficult or hard and you have to it's a struggle. And uh, um, But there's, of course, enough excitement to kind of keep going and uh, uh, it's great to, um, to try and come up with new ideas and, and see if we can make it all work. And uh, So yeah, it's, it's a pretty unique, uh, special time. So. <laughs> what, would you, uh, what, would you what would you say was your legacy? <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of a yeah, big question, but <laughs> I think it's like, uh, like I said earlier, I'm always trying to add something to the design where it has a certain feel to it, a certain kind of. There's a little bit of fun, but it's functional, and it makes you want to play with it and, f and and use it, and mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to do. So, and it seems like with I don't know, for example, with the scrolling, with the bounce stuff, that's an example that's often used, but it's, I think it's, it's something that's, uh, that uh, I think that expresses that, where it's, it's very functional, but it, it's also, there's a little bit of fun to it, so. <laughs> and apparently lots of people like to use it, so that's good. <laughs> and um, mm -hmm. last question. Um, so have you been at Tesla since, since you left? Um, well, I took a break for a while, mm. for a year and a half or so, and then, yeah, and then I started to work at Tesla, so. And so. are you able to talk about what you work on now? Uh, well, user interface for in a car. <laughs> 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 uh, but at this point, I don't want to say too much about okay. it, so. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs> and where do you, where would you like to see the future of uh, mobile UI going? Um, gosh. Um, I think, uh, it's a hard, I don't know, I find it a difficult, that's a difficult question. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> to put it another way, are there any features that you were excited about with iPhone that you would like to see go further, or other ways of interacting with small well, devices? You already see stuff change now, what, what just got announced today too, with like face recognition or that kind of stuff. Uh, maybe there's other things, there's eye tracking. Maybe you don't have to use your finger anymore to scroll. You can just use your eyes to do that somehow or some other way. or. It's even easier. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I don't know yet what it will be, but I can I can imagine that there will be another way to do stuff. All of a sudden, a new and maybe it was something that seemed obvious once it's invented. It's the same with like touchscreen was kind of like oh yeah, well it's just touchscreen, but it became this big big breakthrough because of the right combinations of different things. So I'm expecting at some point there will be another sort of breakthrough combination of ideas that people go, oh my god, this is so much easier and like, it's more fun and it's better and, and then we'll all go all do that, so, <laughs> right, so. And in terms of, um, I mean, there's, the jury is still out on uh, whether things like, you know, augmented reality or wearable and other forms mm -hmm. are working. Do you have any thoughts on, you know, other directions that might go? Um, I mean well, we've explored watches, handheld. Yeah. Well, like I said, I think it's about. Head mounted. I don't know. It's, uh, someone will find the right kind of combinations of things for the right kind of purpose, and then that will become the next thing, or a separate thing that will have its own success. 
So, but I'm not sure what that will be. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, well, I guess, like I said, I've been just super thankful to have been working with all these amazing people and this to work on all this this cool stuff. And it's just, uh, it's just it kind of blows your mind if you think about how many people around the world are using the products. And it's just like super cool to have been part of it and to have made a little contribution to that. So it's yeah. <laughs>